Quick special intro to this podcast. This is a long-awaited one. It's with JP. Now, you will have seen JP on our page for years. This podcast is probably the most long-awaited one that we've had and probably the most demanded one, especially from people in the aftermarket community. Over the past, I'd say, around about 18 months now, we've watched JP go from being a math teacher all the way to being a, well six-figure Amazon seller and one that now earns over £10,000 of profit every month pretty much from Amazon. Let's get into the podcast. It's going to be a great one. We discuss everything, FBA, our relationship, how he's got to where he is now. It's one that I urge you to watch throughout and make sure you hit subscribe. This is going to be probably the, I would say the figurehead, the landmark podcast <laughs> on our channel. This is the one that I've wanted to do for years now. The time has never been right, but now it is. Right. It's the Edge podcast, season two, episode four. And we have possibly the best guest, the most demanded one from the community and the one that everybody wants to hear from. It is... JP. Hello, Jack. <laughs> it's so, an honor to be here. <laughs> so I'll give a bit of an intro, but I'll let JP uh, give his as well. So JP, somewhere or another, became my best friend. He wriggled <laughs> his way in and I've not, been able to get, I've not been able to get rid of him. Now, this podcast, it might go that long that we split it out over two parts because there's a lot that I want to get into here and there's... So much value. Um, I don't want any of any of it to be missed. And some of it, like if you're here just to learn about FBA, well then not all of it's going to be relevant to you. However, there's a lot of lessons in here, a lot of stuff that we're going to touch on that's just genuine life advice that we've both picked up from mistakes that have been made and the journey that we've been through since we've known each other. It's been an emotional one, hasn't it? It's been, it's been a good ride. It's been a good ride. <laughs> and it's now at the point where... Stuff's going really well for both of us, so we can reflect back on that. And then, yeah, we'll go from there. But please, please, I'm going to encourage you, if you're new to the channel or you you know who we are and you, you usually watch a bit of the podcast here and there, if there's ever going to be a podcast that you're actually going to sit and watch or listen to in the car, this is going to be the one, okay? Right, JP, <laughs> introduce yourself. So, okay, give background. My name is JP. I'm a full-time Amazon FBA seller. I have my own storefront on Amazon. Um, I used to be a teacher. I've got a maths degree, maths, um, master's in teaching. Did teaching for a year. And um, yeah, and here we are today. Yep. And what we'll do is we'll jump into it how we usually do. So into JP's background, sort of education. Did he always feel like he had a bit of an entrepreneurial spirit or... Was it that he always thought it'd be in a nine to five? We'll, we'll dig all of that out, find the good stuff and go through the whole journey and then get to the FBA side of it. Um, sort of as up to where he is now, there's a lot of stories that we've been through together that lead up to FBA. And there's probably going to be a lot of laughs on this podcast. So it's going to be a good one. Yeah. Right. You've got, your, you've done master's in teaching. Yeah. Maths teacher. Maths degree. Yeah. Yeah. Education. Okay. How was you in back school? Back from the very start. Yeah, yeah, we're going back from the start, mate. So, had a relatively normal um, upbringing. Um, shout out Julie. Shout out my mum and dad, yeah. I love them a lot. Um, mum and dad both working, working very hard. Um, never, we always never went without, but we never had um, excess money, if that makes sense. We've we've just always had um, enough to get by. My mum's... Ne- me and my mum has spoiled me, but not like ridiculously, but she's yeah. given me what I want and stuff for Christmas and stuff. Um, and yeah, in terms of my school, went to an all-boys school for secondary. So that was um, pretty good. But I say in, in my secondary um, years, as it went on towards year 11, definitely sort of went in a shell. Um, don't know, it's quite hard to, to explain, but I, I was I lost my outgoing sort of thing. I wasn't going out with my friends or anything. I felt like in school as well, in my secondary school, I didn't really have like a good a good friend group of mates, and that was uh, that really did bother me. So when I was sixteen, I done relatively well in my GCSEs. I decided it was time for a change, so I went to a mixed secondary school. 
first year that was very hard to fit into a new place. Um, and then second year I thrived. I loved it. Loved every minute of it. Um, made some really good friends there that I just went away with last week. And, and yeah, that was my school life really. So at the point of school life, obviously you've done quite well, gone yeah. the traditional route like I did with university. Yeah. Did you always sort of envision yourself of going that normal graduate route yeah, where you're I going mean, to go into a grad job? Yeah, so with me, I've got two older cousins that um, my oldest cousin did maths and I've always looked up to my cousins in a really weird way. <laughs> I've always, like when I was younger, my my old, um, my, my second oldest cousin said he wanted to be a dentist, so I wanted to be a dentist. It was just always, they were like my two older brothers, if that makes sense. So um, when the older one did maths, I love maths as well. It was just like, uh, he, he loves it. I asked him about it. It made sense for me to do it. I always thought maybe I'd become an accountant or something. I did a my, funny story actually. We're going to my dad. <laughs> my dad's a taxi driver. He had like a, a CEO of, um, I think it's Wealth at Work, the company in his in his taxi, and he got him to this um, train station on time, and he owed me that a favour. So my dad got me in there for a day, and I thought, yeah, this is me. This is what I want to do. Um, but then <laughs> it didn't end up that way and we'll go on to why it didn't but yeah, yeah. that's why I sort of envisioned myself doing sort of finance yeah yeah and you thought so did you did you ever sort of have the itch or the aspiration bef- before yeah we got into what you started when you like before aftermarket and stuff when yeah. you first joined before all of that did you have the itch to start to actually so be your own boss my mum and dad always said like you will be you'll do great things in life. Obviously, I can dad, my mum and dad knew yeah. I'd always go on to be a businessman. Like they just said it was always a thing. So when I was younger, I don't know if you're like this, but I used to love like the apprentice, Dragon's Den, yeah, Shark yeah. Tank. I used to watch them like religiously. Yeah. Um Secret Billionaire, all shows like that I used to love. Um so I always knew I wanted to maybe do something, but as with everything and probably with you before you started everything, you don't really know what it is. Yeah, yeah, that was exactly me. Like, it was like, I, I always envisioned that I would be successful one day. And in my version yeah. of success, I'm not saying I'm successful by, by everyone's means, my version, I would be successful. However, I just didn't know I was going to get there. Yeah, I mean, I've seen that TikTok where it's like successful people, they have that thing where they, they think they're different to everyone else sort of thing. I always knew that I was, I wanted more in life. Yeah. And if that makes me, you know, arrogant, then so be it. But I, I knew I wanted more. I knew I, I was going to get it, but I never mm. sort of knew what, because starting a traditional business is, um, it's quite difficult to come up with an idea, isn't it? So I yeah, always yeah. knew wants to be my own boss, maybe one day, but as you, as you know, you fall in that trap of just going down the traditional route because yeah, yeah. your mum and dad want you to, or, you know, you want to earn some money so yeah yeah it's just it is like the it almost it's just the easy way out isn't it because it's well, very yeah. guided it's just a traditional it's like the um, well everyone else doesn't exactly yourself. that's what i mean it's comf- yeah, comfortable it's, comfort, it's easy it's like it's just a pack of sheep yeah, just following and exactly doing. that but yeah so went down that traditional route anyway and um it was at the end of my a levels i <laughs> Sorry, mum. I did no work for A-levels at all. <laughs> I did so much work in my GCSEs, but in A-levels, I was just enjoying going out and stuff. I did do work, but I didn't do as much as I sort of had to yeah. for A-levels. Um, I mean, yeah, so I didn't do the best in A-levels. I got a B, DD, a B in, AS, further maths. Um, so, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we d- I did my maths A-level a year early. And I got a, D, I think I got a, what did I get in that? I think I got a C or a D in that. So you said I need to reset that for the, for year 13. I remember, didn't, you was in aftermarket at this point, was No. Was it, was it, was so what did you, was, did you, did you, did you re, after a reset year at uni? No. Well, what no. was it that, you, I remember that you had to reset something when we no. knew each other. Yeah, that was, um, that was when I was doing my teaching, I'll go into that more. Okay. Um, but A-levels got B, D, D, and that was at the point where I was like, I can't go to a Red Brick University. I was like, yeah my life's over. Yeah. I remember being in my school getting my results and I was just stressing. Yeah. You know what I'm like when I stress? Yeah. Like, I do stress. Honestly, like <laughs> when he stresses, it's like nothing you've ever seen. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. My mum's like 50 times worse than me. So that's where <laughs> we get it from. So <laughs> I remember stressing and then it was my cousin's girlfriend. She was like, she was into finance or something. She's like, <laughs> loads of people on my work went to John Moore's. You'll be fine. Go there. Don't be sitting here. It's a, um, a waste of a year and that was like honestly some of the best advice that anyone's ever given me because I think if I would have reset that year my life would be completely different it would just be I would have been in the exact same point that I would have been anyway so yeah, yeah, yeah. it was honestly great but I might not have even done better in my A level so yeah, yeah. that was a great bit of advice and obviously then went to John Moore's it wasn't my first choice but in terms and then I just knew I wanted to stay at home and um, I didn't really fancy going away 
I thought the re- one of the reasons why I did stay at home was because of financial wanted. I always knew I wanted to like, I had this envisioned in my mind, like when I get a job, I'll, I'll try and get into property. I'll get my first property. And then if I'm at home, I'll have enough money to start that straight away. That was sort of like my original plan. But obviously things didn't work out that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, so university. Yeah. University did maths. Um, second year COVID hit. And I'm actually, I think that was like, COVID was like the best and worst thing that ever happened to me in so many ways. Um, good because, like, <laughs> I'm not going to say what we did, but we, it was very, the exams were easier because yeah, yeah. me and my friends, we could help each other and stuff. Um, just, it was, it was very laid back. It was, yeah, yeah. Um, if we needed help, we could very easily. Get, and it, it did bring me very close to my uni friends. I'm still good mates now. We live, some live in Manchester, um, the Wirral, um, the Witness, place like that. But we're all very close. We met mm-hmm. up last year. We're going to meet up again soon, hopefully. Um, but very close to them and we got each other through it. And then um, at the end of uni, I was like, it was like one of them. So it was actually second year uni when I, when I joined Aftermarket. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if you want to go into that now or... Yeah, yeah, we can touch into that. So, JP, I I almost rem- pretty much remember JP from day one. And there's a great reason for that. The reason is because I could not get him out of my direct messages. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. Bring up the receipts. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I would like every single day, this guy like would not leave me alone. You had your profile no. picture was... um. <laughs> Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill from uh, Superbad. From Superbad. <laughs> and JP became this alias, this character in the community that everybody knew. I was actually JP Lap when I first joined, yeah, wasn't yeah. I? Um, yeah. But <laughs> what do you think about I don't think you've ever told you this. But when I joined Aftermarket, that was like at the start of like PS5 reselling, wasn't yeah. it? I remember like this guy, <laughs> Home Economicus, getting all these PS5s. And I was like, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> Who is? I didn't even realise you owned the group yeah, yeah. until about, you know, two months in. I was like, who the hell is this guy? Because remember, like, I don't know if you remember, like, one of our first interactions was, we it was like a Supreme drop and we copped them. Um, there was like a, was it, was it Smurfs? Um, uh, Supreme t- skateboards. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I copped the red one. Yeah, yeah. And I was going to sell it for like £10 profit. And you were like, no, don't sell it for that. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't sell it. I made a bit more on it. But that was like our first ever, like, interaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I think in aftermarket, like, should I go on to like why I joined Aftermarket and stuff? Yeah, yeah, go for it. So with Aftermarket, um, in terms of like how I started reselling, um, second year uni, had no money. And when I mean I had no money, like when I went up with my mates, I was like so scared that I wouldn't be able to afford the night out. I was, I had that, that low amount of money, um, which is really embarrassing to say. But obviously most people in uni are like that, mm-hmm. which is why you encourage the whole side hustle thing for students and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, so had no money, knew I sort of wanted to make money. Um, and funny enough, because of COVID, we were all going on Call of Duty. And I wasn't even that good mates with Stevie at the time, but he was on and he was talking to another lad called Adam about this whole Supreme drop. Yeah. I remember the first time it caught my, caught my ear and I was like, hmm. I was like, didn't ask too many questions, just listened. Yeah, yeah. And then it was like a week later, obviously the next Thursday or whatever it yeah, was, yeah. they talked about it again. It was like the Wednesday and he talked about it again. Like it, was like the, it was like a Van Supreme shoe yeah, yeah. drop. And then I asked Stevie about it and I wasn't even that close to Stevie at the time. I was just mates with him through COD really. And we just got speaking about it. And then I was like, yeah. And, but none of his mates really took him up on it, like yeah. to, to do reselling with him. Like he said, like I was the first one who actually like really listened to him and like knew the reselling was good. Like I really mm-hmm. jumped on the idea of it. So anyway, when I first heard that resell, I thought, yeah, I'm going to look into this whole shoes. And I actually remember my first ever Supreme drop. I thought Supreme dropped on a Tuesday. So I went on Supreme at Tuesday, 11am and just copped a random (laughs) t-shirt for like 70 quid and was like, yes, (laughs) yes, I'm going to make so much money. And then the time was going up and it just wasn't going out of stock. And then, yeah, it was a Thursday, 11 a.m. that it, it dropped. So I've still got that T-shirt on. I'm on wardrobe now. It's such a bad T-shirt as well. There's a lesson here in as well. So his first first sort of dabble in reselling was a complete failure. Yeah. And if he would have let that stop him, you yeah. wouldn't be sat here today and yeah. your life wouldn't be where it is today. <laughs> yeah. So don't fucking worry about making mistakes. We've yeah. all done it. Yeah. Carry on. So, yeah. So anyway, so... Um, I wanted to get into this whole shoe reselling thing and I, I noticed that I could go on the office, I could go on office website, 
which is like, you know, offsprings of the website. And I could buy like, <laughs> Steve, he's going to laugh at me off this because mm. he's, he always says, I found you selling Nike Element Reacts. Yeah, and I thought, yeah, you, yeah, I you heard the story. So I used to buy like Nike Element Reacts for like £45 and sell them on Depot for like £20 profit, £10 <laughs> profit, just to make some money. Uh, but anyway, so I was doing that. I was making pennies. But it was, for me, I had no money. It was good. And then anyway, um, this idea of a cook group got introduced to me and I remember Stevie at the time was in this big cook group um, a big EU one that was closed and then I was speaking to Adam another lad who was looking to get into resale at the time and he said oh, I've joined this aftermarket group um, you know it, um, we, we bought this shoe it was like I think it was like an Adidas Simpsons shoe or something yeah, stupid yeah, like that yeah, it was one of Rox's flips yeah, yeah. you know what they Shout were like back Rox. in the day what they yeah, were like they yeah. were like they were in stock for ages. They'd go out of stock after like a couple of hours and you'd make like £50 a pair. Yeah, it was like yeah. ridiculous. Rocks was con so consistent. It was on fire, them. wasn't yeah. it, when the group first? It really was. And then, so anyway, I heard about this aftermarket and then I looked online for cook groups and I actually messaged you and obviously the other group, which um, the, the other boys run. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the only reason, and I, I do think it's because you were smaller than them at the time, yeah, yeah. you answered quicker. Yeah, yeah. So if they go on their DMs, I will have, my, my Instagram will have DM them. <laughs> So if Milo's watching, if he goes back, he will see at the end of that <laughs> Instagram. But the only reason why I joined you is because you reply quicker yeah, and yeah. got me in the group quicker. And it's so mad, like this whole like butterfly effect yeah, of life. Yeah. Like if all these little things didn't happen, would I be here right now? No. no yeah. It's so, it, it's too when scary. When you actually to really pull it back, it's like one thought yeah. in one moment has led to a sequence yeah, and of events continuously, yeah, yeah. that have then resulted in it's this. It's so scary to think about. So anyway, yeah, during the group, I remember I joined and you'll remember, do you remember what shirt it was that we coughed first? You Boba will remember Fett. it. What? Boba Fett. It's Boba Fett. Shoe. The idea this Boba Fett. We coughed, like, I must have got like three or four pairs of them maybe. Um, they were so good at first then, weren't they? They were really good. Like buy for a hundred pounds, we sold them like on um, Goat, wasn't it? It was yeah. alias now, but it was Goat, wasn't it at yeah. the time? And we sold them for like 80 pound profit a pair. And then I was like and was, hooked on yeah. reselling. At yeah. that point I was like, Okay. And then I remember, should we to just go on about that? Like on, the re whole reselling thing. So my mum was, when my mum said, she, I was coming on here today, mum was like, oh, you best tell him about how like our, our house was a warehouse and all this. So I've got to go into all this. So basically I was that hooked that I was ordering like 1,000 pound. I got to the point where I was ordering 1,000 pound hot tubs, yeah. putting them in my living room. <laughs> Mine doesn't be in the living room. We had like a couch here, a couch here, a couch here, TV there, hot tub. <laughs> um, so I didn't buy any more hot tubs because my mum kicked off at that. I remember I remember that in the chat. I remember my that mum kicked off at me. She was like, when's this blowing hot tub going on? So didn't order any more hot tubs after that. But um, They were a good money maker though, weren't they? They the were really good money. That's the thing. Like for me, it was just like, I'm, it's like an hour's work maybe for a hot tub because the well, shoes are even less but for a hot tub maybe an hour's work and I'm making a couple hundred pound profit yeah, was, at the time the, uh, the lazy spares some of them were doing like over yeah. a grand profit yeah it was at that point though it was so like sort of artificial the environment like COVID we was yeah. making money on anything and, and she, everything I remember like even we were making money on things I remember like them American coins Yes, yeah, yeah. The, made, like, yeah, yeah. I made like a hundred, two hundred pounds on some of them. This is like the OG days of reselling, like for me anyway. And they were, um, they were good days. Like I look back on them days, and I, because like now with the money I make now, I'm like, if that was back in the day, I would be like jumping around my room right now, like because yeah, yeah. I remember like if I used to make like if I used to cop like ten pairs on Foot Locker using a bot, I'd make like three hundred pounds, two hundred pounds. I would be so happy. I would be like telling all my mates to be like, not in the show, but I was like. Oh, I've oh, just made this amount yeah, of money yeah. or like carnage boss yeah, yeah. I'd buy a Disney doll and I'd be like I've just made it <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean so it was just it's scary to think how far I've come on this journey and since but them OG days of reselling were they were good they I, were really really, did. I really, really did and the whole environment of aftermarket because we were such a small group because I think I joined probably like three weeks four weeks in didn't I yeah, yeah. the whole environment of you know it was like a fucking group of boys and it was yeah. just everyone was printing I remember, insane like, amounts I of money I remember as well you put in like you put in a, a picture of like Sakai's. That was when the, the first yeah, Sakai's came yeah. on. I remember like, you had your toes in the picture, and yeah. I was like, everyone was just reacting like feet emojis and stuff to it. I'm, like, <laughs> it was like <laughs> the early days of aftermarket where it I was, was just organized. On my phone. Chaos, I remember that, we've talked about this before. Like, I remember because you were saying, like, um, your family was saying, why are you always on your phone? And you just like laughing at your phone. That was what it was like. Yeah, like yeah. It was just like a big group chat. Yeah, for like, the lads at the time, like my missus at the time fucking hated it like yeah. i'd be sat in bed laughing at my phone. i would not get off it remember because that, it was just yeah. like a fucking it was like it a, was it was like a lad's whatsapp remember, chat like 
Kurt, shout out Kurt and Big Harry Gorilla. Like, even he was just amazing yeah, in that yeah, chat. Yeah, Gorilla. And like, it was just, it, it was a really, everyone was just there for each other and it was, it was really, it was really nice. And that was like what gave me that first sort of like, right, reselling. And then we'll go, we'll go down the line of terms of like, um, sorry, I've lost your idea. No, right. What we can do is though, before we move into anything else, yeah. we'll touch on a little bit more about me and JP. Okay. So JP obviously started loving reselling, started contributing a lot. Um, and with aftermarket, we don't hire externally. So we only hire people that are in the community and they're contributing, they're adding value. Um, and we, we recognize that. JP was one of them people, um, obviously because he became so addicted to it and fell in love with the community. And then it got to a and point- <laughs> We'll get onto this. <laughs> um, where <laughs> where um, obviously we then hired JP, and he became part of the team. Now, we never, JP, like, like like I said at the start, was in my DMs all the time. Whether he <laughs> wants to admit it or not, he knows he was. Now- We'll get the receipts of after this. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then it, things got interesting with me and JP where we had the first aftermarket arbitrage meetup. Shout out, everyone's yeah. there. Still a lot of the staff from that meetup are still on board today. Still on board today. Yep. It's a really good day there. It was a really good day. Yeah. So we got all the staff together and in Manchester and we did a meetup. Now, JP was running late. However- I was working at a B&M at the time, wasn't I? Yeah. In head office, summer job. That's how skint I was, man. Like that is, yeah. I was working full time B&M in the summer. Um, and yeah, so I was running late because of yeah. work. So- <laughs> Not my typical JP lateness. wasn't, um, his concern wasn't about being late. <laughs> And his concern wasn't about missing out on anything. His concern was that there wouldn't be a seat left next to me. And he was sending messages in saying, please make sure no one sat next to Jack. Please make sure no one sat next to Jack. I need to sit next to Jack. And I was like, right, I think I know how this is going to go. Yeah. And since then, yeah. this, well, the rest yeah. has been history. Well, talking about that day, actually, because I didn't want to actually mention this. Good job you brought that up. I remember going to that day, actually, and that was the first day that I realised money existed. And not, I remember you told me about like your boys from around yours and like you're showing me the house and the cars you're driving. And I remember my head was like blown off at this point. Cause you got to realize I, I still didn't have that uh, any money at all. Maybe mm -hmm. like a thousand pounds, 2000 pounds max. Um, and I, my head was blew off. Like even like sitting next to you and you had your watch on and that was like, I was gassed. I was just <laughs> yeah. like, oh my God. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. it was just, that day for me was like one of, it's, you have like them pivotal days, don't you? Yeah, like you're yeah. like, my mindset changed. My mindset definitely changed a little bit that day because I realized there's money to be made. Didn't know how I was going to get it still, yeah. but I knew there's money to be made in the world. Um, yeah. My head was blew off that day. It really was. Yeah. And then we sort of went from there and I guess JP is at times, and he'll, he'll not mind me saying this, JP used to frustrate me. The reason <laughs> being, he was excellent at reselling, right? And he was doing really good. I already know what you're going to say. And then, <laughs> and then, but JP, probably like a lot of you, liked to hop around yeah. from side hustle to side hustle. <laughs> so he'd be messaging me on his like, start trading. Then it was started reselling cards and he got an, a, a, a card, a football card addiction. Yeah. Was and like then <laughs> he, um, what else did you do? You went into, uh, yeah, you've gone, things. you've gone into like crypto. Yeah. All that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, you, you've basically done all of the main side hustles really, haven't you? And it then, when, <laughs> like, we'll touch on it more, but when it got to FBA, he was in the office pretty much, like you were in quite regularly at that point learning with me and Sam. Yeah. And, and, and I said to him, like, you better fucking stick at this one. Yeah. Like, because whatever he, you did, you did really well at it, but then for no apparent reason, you jump ship onto the I mean, next yeah, one. Yeah, but that, a lesson can definitely be learned from that yeah. film. For, for everyone watching, because if you've got something that you're focusing on, if you focus on it for a year or two, honestly, if you if you know something's going to make you money, just fo nail down on it. It's like when you sort of say pr proof of concept, yeah. nail down on it after a year or two, God knows where you'll be, but I'm telling you, you'll be in such a better place if you actually focus on one thing. Don't get sidetracked by all the distractions. Because yeah, you've been there. I've been there. Trust yeah. me, I've been there and... I could have been a lot richer than I am now if I didn't do it. So take my <laughs> advice because I could have. Yeah. And then, so I guess sort of from here, reselling, yeah. loads of that. We went through all the glory days together, PS5s, hot tubs, weights, 
um, shoes, Wait, yeah. everything. everything. Um, it was, yeah. You've been like, through it, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then from there, um, I guess we can touch on more so of what we did together when we did a business. Yeah. Do you think the right time to get into it? Or yeah, have you got definitely. Else on this why topic? not? Why not? Yeah. Okay. So me and JP, um, and, um, if you're an OG member, you'll know who LP is. Shout out Lawrence. And then Stevie, if you're an OG member, you'll know who Carol Baskin is. Um, the four of us came together because we all became great friends and decided to do a business together. Now, there's lessons to be learned from this, isn't there? And yeah, we're going to touch on all of this because that business failed. Um, and it wasn't, I wouldn't necessarily say it was 20 fault of our own. It was, there was, yeah. it was down to us slightly, um, Just but the there was the market was. conditions yeah. that we, it was sort of like we made as much money as we could in a short amount of time. And then when the market dried up, so did the business. And we had to wipe our hands with it. Yeah. But let's jump into that. Yeah. So yeah, got into that, didn't we? When was that? 20, 2021, was it? Because so. I remember we actually started it the week after the Hall the, that famous Halloween party. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> the Halloween party was good. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, when's the Halloween party? And I remember actually the day after that. And two days that's after, where I met Stevie for the first time, wasn't it? Yeah. Two days after that party, that was when I started my first teaching job as well. Yep. Which is really... Um, but yeah, so um, we got into this whole crypto thing. And it was, I think I started um, crypto probably in like um, the summer of 2021. And it was at that point where I was like, um, I was coming to the end of uni, reselling as well. That is why I was like so, so hesitant about going into like a, a job. And that is kind of the reason why I didn't go into finance because I knew I could make money. I remember sitting down with my mum, my mum was mate, my mum was mate, um, had a bit of money to, well, she still does have money. And she was like, um, you need to prove to your mum that you can actually make the money because mm. your mum's really panicked. So it was like, that's the reason I went into teaching is because I got paid for it. It was easy enough. And I thought the time, I'll have loads of time to do my side hustles outside. How wrong was I? But anyway, mm. so gone into crypto, then we made good money, really good money, lessons to be learned that we're not going to go into um, with that business. We, but yeah, we, could touch, we could touch on some parts of it. I think yeah. it's important. Um, I think the main one, um, the business was actually very successful for the clients uh, yeah. that we had. There was people, again, it was in the same sort of space, the Discord world. We had clients that made a fuck ton yeah, of money. Like um, 30k plus in a week. Something yeah, like £30,000 in a week yeah. we had people doing. Um, there was someone who I worked with um, in my uh, graduate job at the time. His dad um, actually joined the platform. And then um, my colleague was messaging me saying like, what the fuck have you been doing with my dad? He did nine grand profit yesterday. <laughs> He's done 8K today. Like, how is he doing this? Like, it was, an, again, another whirlwind. It was almost like a little bit like COVID, in, like the, the reselling space during yeah, COVID. Yeah. It was a little it was bit crazy like that. Time. It was. And we, we, the business was ran, like it, it was very successful for clients. The lesson that I guess to put it bluntly, probably more so applies to you mm -hmm. with the, 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 the mistakes you made. Yeah. I should have maybe being sort of in the game a little bit longer yeah. and spotted what you were doing and tried to stop it. Yeah. But go yeah. on, explain. Yeah. So touching upon that whole, I feel like 2021 me isn't like me. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like, cause before COVID, I was in a really good place and then COVID hit and I just sort of lost all good habits about myself. And then 2021, 2022, that was when I probably hit like, just like, I don't know. I was just like, I don't even feel like that person now. Do you get what yeah, I mean? Yeah. In the sense of like, I didn't really, I sort of like didn't have that that drive or like that, that, that dedication or commitment to something. Like if I said I was going to do something, as you said with me hopping from different stuff, I'd, I'd always be that guy who would say I'd do something, but I'd never actually do it. And like, I didn't apply myself 100%. Whereas now I feel like in most aspects of my life, I'm applying myself 100% of the time. And if you don't apply yourself, you're going to fail. But we have, we, we regularly will be on FaceTime at fucking half 11 at night and you'll be in the unit and I'll be sat upstairs. Yeah. I mean, people don't see that though. Do mm. they? And that's, that's the thing you've got, you've got to want it. And I feel like back then, I was in a really bad place mentally. Not that I was depressed or anything, but I was definitely not in the strongest place mentally. Mm -hmm. um, 
thankfully I've come out the other side. Um, but that is all down to hard work. You've got to get out of it. You've got to work hard. And I look at that 2021 20, version, as I said, and it, I just don't feel like that's me. But, mm-hmm. you know, that's another time. And we learn from our mistakes, don't we? Maybe I could have done more, shouldn't have done this, should have done that. But at the end of the day, it's in the past. We move forward, don't we? Great memory. Great um, memory. This ride's a bit full circle coming on this podcast now because the day after, we always the night we got back from that wedding. Was it Pegasus? No, Marcus was on the podcast. Ah. I remember coming up and Marcus was here. I remember me, me, Sam and Ben and one of Marcus's mate watched the podcast. I remember like, that was another pivotal moment where it was yeah, like, yeah. you saw my all this life and I, it was just like, even Sam at the end was like, what a great podcast that was. So, And if you're wondering who Marcus is, you can go to episode two of season two and there's a couple in season one. Marcus, gone clear, <laughs> multimillionaire. Yeah. Fucking smashed it. Yeah deserves everything he's got because he works fucking hard yeah. but again you can watch him on episode one where he's got he's he's doing all right for himself but he's pretty much um not not got abundance let's say yeah. he's now in dubai he owns a rolls royce he owns um, a villa an apartment a lamborghini this guy has uh he's got Patek, richard miller he's fucking sent it hard yeah. and you can see in that short amount of time life's changed yeah Remember, like, the lessons that he taught us in that podcast as well. Just even listen to it live. Remember, like, thinking, like, I remember I downloaded Audible, started listening to audiobooks. And then I remember, like, I was like, that was like, actually after that point, I was like, I need to get back in the gym. Um, Because I did put on a lot of weight during COVID, yep. in case anyone doesn't know. And, and just to give JP some credit here, he has undergone an incredible transformation. Thank you, man. Both financially physically and mentally yeah his success here and th- i think this is probably why we've waited so long to do it mm-hmm. because maybe the money was right yeah. but mentally he wasn't there yeah or maybe you were mentally there but you didn't feel comfortable physically yeah absolutely and look he's done he's fucking smashed it and again it's just discipline commitment yeah. consistency yeah. in all realms of life absolutely you've got to be you've got to be disciplined you've got to be committed when you say you've got to make change you, you've got to commit to it but after that podcast sort of thing it was probably like a few months after i was like i need to get back in the gym so that's sort of like and then i need to start amazon and that's where we sort of that's when i really start that's when the journey actually jp does fba that's when that journey that whole journey starts so got in the gym started amazon um, um so now we're going to get into the fba um side of the pod, probably the section that a lot of you are wanting to hear. We will still sprinkle in some of the experience, some of the fun that we've had along the way, Mm -hmm. um, because that's still important. And then we'll probably then move over to mindset. And that's the stuff I'm passionate about, what it's actually taken mentally to get to this point uh, for both of us. Um, But with with your FBA as well, dog has spawned in. Benji, <laughs> we are dog sitting. You may have seen him in the videos before. Um, now, JP, with FBA, you had a bit of a dilemma, a bit of a situation. How did that get going? The year was 2022 and it was June, coming to the end of my teaching. Um, so I wasn't, I was never actually a proper, proper teacher in case people don't know this because it's just easy to say he was a teacher. I was doing my teacher um degree if you like and um, for a year that ended in the end of june i didn't have the best experience in my second school if anyone from that school is watching then i'm sorry but i didn't hate it um that put me off it for life and um, but i knew i wanted to do amazon anyway so you you've obviously started doing amazon for the group and i sort of was like okay right can i can i start this amazon I remember i registered my company in like april and it was just putting off, putting off, putting off, like the old GP always did, just putting things off. And then I ended in June. And then I think I started reselling shoes again for a little bit, for like a month. And then I went away with the charity that I volunteered with. We can get into that as well. It's the, um, I mean, yeah, we'll get into that in a minute. But um, went away with the charity I volunteer with. And then came back from that. And that, the day I came back from that is when I actually started doing retail arbitrage like the day before i went i started had loads of stuff in my car and then the day after i came back i started actually like sending stuff into amazon um and yeah got my first products as everyone knows when you start amazon 
you, you make a few mistakes, you get things that sell, you know, two times a month or whatever. But it happens and that was when I started. I remember like we had, I remember you came once. We did a day, didn't we? I yeah, remember, like, you we came. We did a day of retail arbitrage. We brought it back up. We, we took Jake down to my car. And, and he was like, like, why have you bought this Rubbish, GP? rubbish, rubbish. Yep. But they're the lessons you need to learn. And, you know, um, you've got, you, the thing is, with as with anything in life, you've got to, you've got to give it a go. You've got to learn, you know, it's good enough you know, no one's going to hold your hand through stuff harder. You've got to learn yourself. Like with, you know, riding a bike. If you ride a bike, you're going to fall off, aren't mm-hmm. you? But it's, you know, eventually you'll learn and then it's just like riding a bike. It's yeah. easy. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, yes, you're making mistakes with retail arbitrage at the start, but you can take that, it back. That's the best way. That is 100% the best way to start the retail arbitrage. Like mm. when people um, from by mine ask me, how do I start Amazon or anything? I always say, just take seller ramp into a shop and scan things yep. don't even buy anything just scan things because you can scan products see what sells well see what type of pro- um, profit margins you need in amazon see what you need your cost price to be your sell price to be you know you sort yeah. of gauge what is good where to look in shops you yeah. know it, whereas if you order stuff online you might order 200 units or something and it comes and it's rubbish yep. so go into stores and actually scan things actually you know f- I'm not going to say feel the products then, but actually get the product in your hand and, yeah. you know, look out for stuff and see how heavy is this? Because, yeah, yeah. you know, you can only ship 23 kg at once. So if you're getting something that's two pound profit, but it weighs 20 kg, then it's a no-go, isn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. And that's the the thing with that sort of stuff as well is, is like, <clears throat> you will quickly learn. A lot of people, and we hear it all the time, and we actually touched on it on the podcast with Ben from yesterday, People say in their first few trips, they might not find anything. Mm -hmm. But a lot of that also comes down to not even necessarily knowing a route for that store. Like you will know now, if we went to, um, let's say, a Sainsbury's near you, you'll go, right, we're heading here, 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 and then out. Mm -hmm. Got a route. It's pretty much predetermined. When you start, you're not going to have that route. So you need to put some time into it. And then you will get to the point where you're like, I'm not even going to waste my time checking over there because I know all the good bits are here. And then you become more efficient over time. Again, like learning to ride the bike. When I started, actually, like when you're saying, you know, where's good and stuff. When I first started, I had this shot, this boots in Warrington. Like the, I don't know what it is. I'm not from Warrington, but it was like the the shopping thing in Warrington's got a boots in. I used to go there every Sunday and I used to make maybe like 80, 100 pound profit each time I went there. So that was like really good. And that's sort of like how I started like really yeah, yeah. finding which stores were good and stuff and then it's just sort of snowballed from there really yeah and for you obviously you when you you went pretty much balls deep right well, because yeah. Yeah. you give yourself no other option to succeed exactly so like as I said quit teaching in June didn't apply for any jobs in September you were panicking so I, messaging me a lot always, about this yeah, one, yeah. people always say to me when did you know to quit your job I didn't know I just <laughs> quit my job I think my job was over and I started Amazon FBA and people might be like, oh, that is crazy. But at the end of the day, you had an offer though. Yeah. But th- at the end of the day, why did I do that? Because I was at the time I was 22. I've got no, I'm living with my mum and dad. I've got no commitment there. I know they'd help me. They wouldn't make me pay keep enough if I wasn't like making enough money. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't have, um, I owned my car outright at the time. You know, I didn't have any, I don't have any kids or anything. I didn't have any n- responsibility. So in a way, I I didn't have a big, it wasn't a big risk for me. Yeah, you know, yeah. it really wasn't. It was, and you know, at the end of the day, I, I had this conversation with my mum. It was like, if it doesn't work out in a year, I'll just go back to teaching. Yeah. That, your worst scenario is everyone else is normal. And that is the one thing. To Post it on our story today, that exact quote. Did you? Like that exact quote. Think about that, right? We are willing to take the risk, right? to um start a business and in our mind like the worst case scenario is having to go from business owner to nine to fiver so for a lot of people's reality your reality is our worst scenario that is something that you need to think about however that's not to bash it that's our opinion and that's why mm-hmm. we've got to where we are. I would never, ever, if every every business that I've got my hand in or own outright failed today, I would do everything in my power to make sure I do not go back to the nine to five. So think about it. What do I, what do we know that you don't? 
why wouldn't we go back? Yeah. So yeah, so let's go back to Amazon, start on Amazon. At, at this time as well, so it goes back to what we were saying before, I probably had still not a lot of money at all. I remember I put all my money into Amazon at the time. It was £3,000 I put in. Mm-hmm. I had my watch, I had £3,000 and I put it all into Amazon. And then I literally, it was, um, this is another thing, because I didn't have my money coming in from my wage. That was when it really hit me. I was like, that one funny thing come in. I was like, wow, like this is going to be hard. It was hard. Like, this is the thing people don't realise. When people are like, oh my God, you're killing it now. You're smashing it. They don't realise how hard it was at yeah, the start. Yeah. It was really hard. First one from Amazon I made, I think, £300 profit, which is still really good, by the way. Mm-hmm. For a new side hustle, really good. But I had £300 to live on and I didn't take any of it out. I literally lived as a student. And that's like one of the biggest pieces of advice I can give anyone as well starting a business is don't, people like always ask, oh, when, when can I match my wage? And that, mm-hmm. why would you want to match your wage? Mm-hmm. Why would you want to? Why you 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 gotta have bigger expectations. So for me, it was like I'm not gonna take any money out. I'm gonna let it compound. I remember I had that little money in my personal bank. Like my mate, my mate Owen always says it to me now. He's like, because <laughs> my card works now. <laughs> but he said like I used to get like a bottle of water or a Lucas Aid in the in the machines, and my car would decline. That's mm-hmm. how much I didn't have my personal Fuck. bank. Um, I remember this. <laughs> it's it's embarrassing to say really, but. It, um, I remember like I used to even like be driving in my car and I used to like try and time it to stop at the lights because I wanted to save petrol. Such a stupid way to think, but it was just like the whole idea of like, I've, I'm full in on Amazon. I've got to save as much money as possible. So I stopped going out. I stopped, you know, buying stuff. And, you know, I really did go all in on this. And, I, and as you said, once I had that taste of it again, it was like the OG reselling days. Once I got that taste, that was it then. Because I knew I was going to, I was going to make good money from Amazon because I knew if I stuck to it for long enough, and that was the whole thing that you're saying before. Like, I came in the office, and that's actually that story we can talk about now. Whereas, like, I remember I came into you, and I was like, um, bear in mind, we are like really close to me and Jack. So, for me to not see Jack is a big deal. But close, <laughs> correct yourself, brothers, brothers, we are brothers. So, for me to not come and see Jack and Sam is a big deal. So, I basically said to Jack and Sam, I am not coming back to Manchester until I am making. £3,000, £100 a day from my Amazon business. And yeah. I didn't do fair, did I? You stuck to it. And then about eight weeks later, <laughs> they couldn't get rid of me that easily. I came back. But <laughs> that's the whole thing. I was that committed. I knew, like, I didn't even want to waste the petrol. Com- Not that it's a waste, but didn't want to spend the petrol coming down to Manchester. Yeah. Um, You know, just wanted to save every money. If, I, if there was a minute of the time wasted, then I knew that it was going to affect me. Yeah. Um, and that's what people need to think, right? A lot of people go into Amazon with the either the intention of... um. In the intention of leaving their job or the intention of making more money to go and spend it on holiday, right? Yeah. Or just start paying yourself more every month. Now, this is where you need to start being a little bit wiser financially because if you, let's say you get to a point where your Amazon business is earning 3K a month, right? And you think, right, I'm going to start pulling out 1,500 quid of that month because that's where what I need, right? Or, well, or it's what I'd like to spend on a holiday or this. All you're doing is is delaying yourself from earning bigger monthly sums. Yeah. Because as soon as you're pulling money out, that's less money to reinvest. And it basically softens the softens the scaling of the business. Keeping everything in is a you want to be aggressive, as aggressive as possible. Mm-hmm. And that means, like JP, trying to live a very minimalistic lifestyle yeah. and just build, 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 build. Yeah. And then obviously you're gonna to get to a point where you will start pulling some out. Like yeah. I mean, yeah, like people probably look at me now and they're like, he's going on. So I went on holiday like two weeks ago, then I'm going on holiday tomorrow. And you've got another holiday uh, I've booked. got another holiday booked and I'm sure I'll have one with you. Yep. Maybe a couple more in the pipeline. We do have, um, again, like JP said, where he had the goal of £100 a day, right? I've made a promise to him. <laughs> uh, uh, JP always, he has uh, a lot, he's a man of many quirks, right? <laughs> And he always says to me, he's always said like, I can't wait, Jack, till we're older. We're sat around the pool. <laughs> Kids are playing in the pool. We've got our wives. We're at the all-inclusive. <laughs> he just is a dreamer, but a good dreamer, right? It's not unrealistic, is no, it? No, it's not unrealistic, man. We'll be doing that for sure. And so then i would made a, a promise to him that when he hits uh, £20,000 in profit in one month from his FBA business, I'm taking him away, all expenses paid, 
on an all inclusive. All inclusive. It's not going to be like a, a Paris one. No, it's, it's gonna not going to be, be like... Paris. all inclusive <laughs> holiday resort. He wants to be around that pool soaking up the sun. But the idea of that was like, imagine like how confused people are going to be on Instagram if they just see a picture of me and you like by a pool with like, just like it's just funny, isn't it? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, it's just it's something to work towards, and I will hit that this year, hundred percent. I am determined. You will see the holiday soon, hundred percent. We could actually like we could actually vlog that holiday. Sam's laughing. In the <laughs> We yeah. could actually vote the yeah, holiday. Yeah, we could. Yeah. I've had the holiday for You up for, <laughs> <laughs> you up for uh, a holiday, man? <laughs> we'll have to get working then. But anyway, so back to the holiday thing, the whole holiday idea. I People are going to think, this guy's gone away loads. Because the, yeah. the famous Instagram comeback that I've done the other week, people are like, yeah. he's gone away there, he's gone away now. But yeah. no, I have not had a holiday. Like Paris was like my last holiday. I went yeah. on a little weekend, a uh, two-day one to Brussels with a mate. So it was dead, just like 300 pounds. But apart from that, Paris was my last holiday, which was... And then before that was 2019. So I've had pretty much one holiday in five years. So yeah. like, that's the thing, like I've, I've committed to it. I've went all in on this and it is, it is paying me good now, but people don't see the, the hard work mm-hmm. that goes into it. As you said before about FaceTime me late at night, people do not see this. No. Um, it's just one of them things that I don't think people will ever get it because I've sort of got this thing in my, in my head now where it's just like, I need to get to this goal. And at the end of the day, it's only me that's got to get me there. Mm -hmm. And you've got to work hard. And that's it. Like, and I said this with Ben yesterday, with something like Amazon, right? It's very structured. My phone. It's it's very structured, right? So. My new phone. (laughs) (laughs) So it's very structured. Amazon structured. Yeah. It's simple in terms of the, the basic bare bones framework that you follow. Yeah. Every Amazon seller is following a somewhat similar pathway, similar rules, similar guidelines, stuff like that. Yeah. If the Amazon business is not working, mm-hmm. the only variable that changes in every Amazon business really is the individual owning it, yeah. running it. So like you said, it's on you. Yeah. Like you can look at the aftermath community, our stories, JP, whoever, and you can see loads of people thriving. If yours isn't working right now or you're sort of <clears throat> struggling, first of all, get in touch. But secondly, don't throw the towel in. It's something that can be easily fixed yeah. and it's it's down to you. So you need to admit that and take a, a level of accountability and responsibility. The amount of calls and stuff I've done with people that just throw in the towel after it not working um, and like, uh, for for like a couple of weeks or they have a bad week and they forget about the, the, the success they've had in the past. Even people, the hardest clients that I actually work with now are people that have been very successful in corporate life mm-hmm. and then they've left it, retired maybe, and then want to start Amazon. But because they've not seen instant um, gratification, like instant success, mm-hmm. that, but I was a corporate professional, I was a lawyer, a solicitor, mm-hmm. I was so highly um, regarded in this, but this isn't working, so it's bullshit. No, it's not. Yeah. It's not. This is the thing though, which is like, if they start, like, that's why FBA, the whole FBA model is so good because if they start a normal business, very rare that you get immediate sales, is it? Yeah. I mean, you probably know from start aftermarket, you didn't walk into aftermarket being like this and um, having so many members. It was, I think, did you have one sale on the first day or something? Yeah, the so, first day of aftermarket, I thought I had the most amazing marketing plan in the world. Yeah. I thought the stars were aligned. I've done all this work. One customer is what I got. Yeah. Imagine it, if you stopped though. That's the thing. And that was it? at twenty five pounds. Imagine if you stopped. Like, huh? it's just as I said, it's crazy to think what what wouldn't be. I know. If you had to stop, but that's the whole thing about Amazon. Think about Amazon like this. You are walking in to a business model that guarantees you sales. The customers are there. There's millions of them. You're probably it's a blueprint like no other. You yeah. are you. Buy something for so much, you sell it for this much, you can see on Selleramp how much it sells for, how much profit you're going to get. If you have one or two units when you start and the thing sells a thousand times a month, I can almost guarantee you if you get price it right, it will sell within a day or two. So it's that thing of you're walking into sales and when people, when you tell people walk away from this whole thing, you don't. If, if you haven't seen success, that's only on you because the success is there. There's too many people making good money from Amazon for it not to work. I know. It's... It- and that's the thing, like going back to this whole thing of Amazon. Um, do you remember? I remember when I went back registered actually, yeah. and I, I was in. I remember in, it was in St. Helens. I was in the car park on Morrison's, 
I remember ringing you and I was like, lad, I can't do this. <laughs> lad, it's not going to work. It's not, I wasn't crying, but I was like, lad, this is not going to work. Like, I am not going to be able to do this. Um, but then you literally said to me like, this guy's doing it. This guy's doing it. It can be done. It's up to you. And it took a while, but once you get used to that registration, you can overcome it mm-hmm. and start making good money again. But it's that thing of, imagine if you stopped there. Imagine. Mate, <laughs> Imagine. you wouldn't have gone, you've gone from strength to strength since that. Yeah, absolutely. Every, like You've got to just smash through us, haven't you? <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, like, it. look, if you uh someone that is playing the line and wanting to stay under that reg, I'm telling you now, in the long run, it's not going to be worth it. Yeah. You can make, you can make, to be fair though, if you want to do minimal work and you, it makes sense to stay under that, that threshold. If you want to make, you know, a couple hundred pounds a month, then do it. But it shows where your ambition is if yeah. you're not wanting, I mean. If you've got to the point of that registration, you as a person are already capable. It may just be you don't have the confidence to actually. If you have to worry about that registration, you know you are more, you, you, you're destined for greater things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So why not? Why not go? Because you can get it. Anyone can get it. Anyone, anyone watching this can get it. Yeah. And so with your FBA journey, yeah. so obviously, I've watched it go from you've watched it completely, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. And this is the beautiful thing, mate. I've well, got, I am. I am your guinea pig, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. From the very start of aftermarket to now, I am your guinea pig. Yeah. Because I think even other people who who are doing Amazon in aftermarket, I don't think they've really been with you since the actual start have they really maybe a few no, uh, but not since the very very no, no, start no, no. so i am literally like your project aren't i <laughs> yeah. look at the beautiful masterpiece <laughs> i've created um um what a good decision it was for you to come to that meet mate and sit next I know, to me exactly mate maybe it was, it was all in my head all along yeah yeah maybe <laughs> this is part of a bigger plan it's like tinder swindler that was always the thing, wasn't it? You say, I was like, I'm going to start, I'm going to take aftermarket and I'm going to make my own and call yeah, it before, before market. market. <laughs> but again, right. And I'm not, I'm not like. Just a joke, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but right. I'm not, I'm not going to like sort of blow my own trumpet here, but it goes back to the age old saying of who are you surrounding yourself with? Absolutely. I'd already made good money yeah. and you could see that. So for you, so I leached on you. <laughs> no, it's not leeching though, yeah. bro. It's it's like you fucking worked hard, yeah. And it's not leeching by any means because it's you're someone that's committed. You've put the work and you've got the results. But yeah. if like I'm not saying that like maybe if we didn't meet, you could have been successful in another field. Yeah. But in this field, meeting me has probably sped everything up. Well, yeah. As you said there, like if I wasn't in aftermarket, would I have started? Because like. When I talk to people, they they think it's me doing that. Like I would never have started Amazon with that aftermarket, hundred yeah. percent. Like even though like I'm, um, I have my own leads and stuff now. Aftermarket started me on Amazon. Mm-hmm. That is why in every success post, even though I'm really good mate to you, and I'd still post it anyway. Yeah. There is actually like, I do post it because I learned everything about Amazon from them guys, from the help in the in the Discord, and without aftermarket, about the whole reseller thing, then I wouldn't be where I am now. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not an exaggeration. But this is the thing that's like fucking good for me because when I started aftermarket, right, I never envisioned it would have this this impact on someone, right? It's like when I started aftermarket, I thought I'm just going to make a bit of money for a couple of months and then it just changed and my vision with the community changed and it's at a place now where I never thought it would get to. But again, like anything, when you start something, you, like, I want to be successful, but I don't know how I'm going to get there. Aftermarket was the first business, my absolute baby of a business that, yes, changed my life. And then has led on to me running other businesses and doing other things. And yeah. it is just, once you do it once, God knows where you're going to end up. Yeah. <clears throat> so with that, your Amazon, I guess let's get a little bit into the juicy bits of FBA. So the informative stuff. Okay. Now, Let's talk about where you're at right now. Okay. What, paint the picture of your Amazon business. So right now, um, I am on track to do. Well, I was a, I was at ten k profit at twenty at day twenty of the month. So I'm on track for fifty what, a fifteen k month. The this date month. today is the twenty second. I've not checked it. 20, today. Is it twenty third, twenty fourth, twenty third today? Yeah, twenty third today. So I've not checked it because. Um, I, br- I broke my phone on the weekend and I <laughs> yeah. won't go into that but I've had no phone or anything <laughs> yeah. so 
but this is the thing I went on my Amazon actually um, the other day um, on my Mac uh -huh. and I hadn't I haven't been on Amazon at all because I normally like I don't use the repricer but we'll get into that in a minute but um, I always update my prices manually throughout the day like every yeah. half an hour I am on it all the time yeah. Um, but yeah so I've not been on it but I went on my seller to look it and I hadn't even changed any of my prices in a 4k revenue in a day and I was like like I haven't even touched that yeah yeah it's just, like, it's just ticked it's over it's mad. So yeah, I've, I've not checked my seller's toolkit because I didn't have a phone and so on. But um, yeah, I was like, I'm on for 15K this month, which will be my best month yet. Hunting that 20K profit month yeah. for that all inclusive. Closing, in closing in on it. I will get there because I, I know what I have to do to get there. Yeah. I'm going to keep on pushing towards it. Good, good. And I guess let's talk about, <clears throat> so you said also, obviously retail arbitrage was yes. amazing. Started, yes. Now, where where does the transition change for you? So with retail arbitrage, 100 million percent, if you have low budgets, which I, when I say low budget, by the way, I mean like under two, three thousand pounds. It depends how much time you've got as well, to be fair. But for me, I had all the time in the world because I had no job. I went all in on this. I knew I could get the best returns from retail arbitrage because as, as, there's so many videos that we've done, isn't there? Yeah. Where we go into a store and it's like, Remember Sam bought something and he like that nubby thing, for example. It was like yeah, yeah. four hundred percent ROI or something stupid like that. So much profit on it, and it made this much money. And that return, you're not gonna get that from doing online or anything. So if you've got the time, you've got a low budget, hundred percent retail arbitrage. You know, it get it get you can make easy mistakes as well, can't you? Because as you said, most things unless it's got an expiry date, you can take back. So any electronics that you buy and it's. It's not that good when you get home and you're checking, you, you're gated on it. That's always the thing, isn't it? You should forget about it. You get home, you're like, I've got this amazing product and then you're gated. Mm -hmm. So, you know, retail arbitrage, 100 million percent, best way to start Amazon FBA. Yeah. And then you've obviously the changed now. Yes. Yeah. So the transition came. Well, I mean, where, where was you in the, in, the, in the journey of your FBA business when you start, basically started to shift? So, I mean, probably around that reg. Yeah. Um, because... The only reason why I did switch, RA was going great for me, but the margins would, so I'd be making like 40% ROI, non vas And then as, say if I bought like 50 units or something, it would slowly go down maybe, but it would always recover eventually because as you know, you want to get things in and out mm -hmm. as quickly as possible. It would go down to maybe like 25, 20%. When you're VAT, that might go down to 10%. So I knew there was better ways to make money because you see the seller toolkit screenshots of people who are VAT reg making 30, 40% ROI. So I knew there was money to be made out there. Mm -hmm. So I knew the strategy I was doing was wrong. So essentially what I decided to do was in retail arbitrage was I would go to stores when I knew there was stock there. So I wouldn't go scanning random things because at the end of the day, once you're trying to scale up as well, just scanning random things, it's not very efficient. Efficient, exactly. It's not, it's just not long term, is it? Like if you want to scale up, there's, there's no point going and scanning random, random. Like when I say random things, I mean you scan every single thing that's mm -hmm. on offer in that shop. There's no, there's no point in doing it. So if I knew there was a sale on, like a Lego sale, like the Silent Nights in yeah, yeah, Aldi, yeah. stuff like that, that's what I'm talking about now, I will go and I will go all out on that thing. Cause, calculators. Um, calculators. My thing about this now with RA and OA and A to A and wholesale, I will buy three, four months of a product. I don't care because I know as long as my money's being spent, I don't mind if it takes three, four months to sell because I know it will be selling. Every single day I'll get a few sales on it. I don't mind. Yeah. So that is like my thinking now is I'll only go into resale stores when there is 100% stock there. And you've got like, you know, it's pretty much like a, a winning You get some product. intel, don't you, Ronnie? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. And again, that's the benefit of being in the groups. Exactly. It? Like, I mean, there's been a few leads, like the calculators that we, them calculators, they were really good, weren't they? They, yeah. they sold really, really, because it makes you laugh, don't it? The amount of comments on them, TikToks, like they've not even sold yet. Yeah. They sold he saw before the video even goes out because I used to check, make yeah. Jack, can you not, can you not upload yeah, this? Yeah, he would want me Because we are close. So yeah, I used yeah. to say to so, him, um, please don't put this video out until I've sold it. But they'd, they'd be sold within a day or two. So it'd be like, yeah, you can put it up. Yeah. And exactly that's, again, right. I'm just going to dive into this now. Everyone in the comment section that comes with this fucking stupid argument about- The yappers. Well, yeah. 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 Doom scrollers. <laughs> All you do is sit there. You've got nothing better to do, right? Thank you for constantly engaging because you're just helping us grow. <laughs> However, you are idiotic. The reason mm. being is if we put out there <clears throat> that we made £100 
in an hour, right? I'm going to challenge your argument right now, and I want you to think about it. First of all, when we say the £100, that's usually a conservative figure. Usually we would be looking to get more than that, but we drop it down in case of any price fluctuations, okay? Secondly, when you work your nine to five, or even like whether you're on an hourly rate or a salary, if you're on a salary, you can still bring that back to an hourly rate. You can do the maths. When you're on your nine to five, are you being paid on the hour every hour? No, you're not. You're going to get paid at the end of the month, maybe. We, me making that claim, saying I did £100 an hour, I'm probably going to get paid before you from that than what you're going to get from your nine to five. So in reality, your argument is completely flawed. Yeah. If you were getting paid in your nine to five on the hour, every hour, fair enough, hold my hands up, it's wrong. But you are doing work, you are expending labour, whatever, you are contributing work, and then getting a reward at the end of the month. We are doing the exact same and waiting for the sale. That sale may, may happen within 10 days time, shorter than you waiting for the end of the month. Okay, think about it. The only defense I can give them people is I think every like most people think like that because even my dad said to me, why is Jack saying this? He hasn't, and I have to explain to him, well, he's done that amount of work, he has done that. Everyone thinks like it, yeah. but it's, it, this is the thing. It's like education. It's, it's the, the sort of the mentality yeah. that is, if you're right, instead of fucking sitting there in the comments and typing, why don't you go out there and make more money? Yeah. Why don't you be productive? I mean, I, me, me and Jack were in hating when we started our businesses and stuff. We, I, I didn't have the time to, to type and scroll on TikTok and comment on hate on people's videos for no reason. Oh. You, you, he just trolls General G, but I, <laughs> he's been blocked by General G for everyone that knows him. But I have never in my life commented on a video negatively. I've commented on my friend's videos, like, or like anything like that, like positive. Yeah. But what the, what is going wrong in your head to be that yeah. angry at life to sit there and do that? Honestly, mate. Ask an informative question instead of like, instead of saying, you did not do this, say like, yeah. How did you do this? Or why did you do this? Or just ask something that will actually educate you. Because most of these people, they want to know, but they just, I don't know, maybe it's a pride thing. So, they don't, yeah, they and, don't and I don't even know what it is. Like we had a guy, and I remember your name. So you're getting a shout out. Money Mitch coming for you. <laughs> in the comments on one of our Instagram, <laughs> you said summer, there was an insult, but you was like, no, you didn't. You fucking something, right? <laughs> summer rude, right? Within about, I was actually, luckily for you, I was on my phone at the time that that notification came through. And it was like, within like 10 seconds that I replied. And I was like, money, Mitch, makes no money. Didn't hear anything back from you, mate. So when you get a minute, reply to that and prove me wrong. Okay? <laughs> Let's crack on. Just have loads of sellers here. Okay? And he is this big Amazon seller. <laughs> nah, mate. He's on public Instagram, bro. It's yeah. not happening. No. Right. So <laughs> back to it. Yeah. We've, we've so back, the to the, stuff. back to the RE stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. So as I said, like I would just go into stores now when I know there's leads there. Mm -hmm. And then it's sort of like, like I got introduced to the idea of Amazon to Amazon. I thought, it was, I thought yeah, it's quite good that. Started doing Amazon to Amazon. Because at the end of the day, the, the thing that I loved about when I started doing Amazon to Amazon in LA from lead groups was I can go out. I remember the exact day. I remember the exact lead there was I was in. Tes this is how far I used to go. I was in Tesco in, it was like Crosby or Formby, which from me is probably like a half an hour drive. Um, was all the way up there doing like a lap of all the Tesco's. And I came out after buying, I bought a load of um, Crayola crayons, made all right money on them. Came out as I was coming to my car, had a ping, bought the ping. Made, so basically from these Crayola crayons, I made like, I think it was like 50, 60, 70 pounds or whatever it was. Can't remember the exact amount. And then on the ping, it was like these, you know, seven C's yeah, vitamins yeah. made 60 pounds from them bars. So essentially I thought in my head, I can work RA, do this as well and get paid double. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember the, um, Surf, you know, P20 what's... sun creams? Yeah. P20 sun creams. We'll talk about all this. So, um, We'll talk about the biggest cooks and stuff yeah, a, a yeah. bit later, but the, the the first big thing was with A2A was, I remember I got an, un, it was, I don't have an unlimited account before anyone says, it was an uncapped lead. It was these surfings, wasn't it? Do you remember them? Remember my unit was just full of them. 
The pot, uh, the, 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 the washing the, pot. Yes, yes, I remember. So there was like these surfings, they were uncapped lead. I copped all the units for them. I had that lead selling for like a good three months. Um, and yeah, they were, they were like my first big cook. Like I made like three grand on them. And that was when I was like, I remember making three grand. I was like, that's my whole, that's my whole monthly wage. I was like, yes, get in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just from that one. So that was like my first, so I was like, Ace Away, I still do Ace Away now, but like you can find them uncapped leads on Ace Away. People think they don't exist. They do exist because I've I've got a few selling right now in my store where, and I was speaking to Sassy about this this week actually about like uncapped leads on Amazon, uh, Amazon to Amazon. You can find them. They are out there. They're hard to find, but mm-hmm. they are out there. So when you find a good one, then obviously, as cool. I said, I go all out. And that's what I was going to say. Like another lesson I think from JP to take, and I remember we spoke about this is, when you find something and you, cause when you get to, when you get to a certain point, you have enough conviction in your own sort of thought process and you trust yourself that much that you will go hard on something. If you yeah. find something, yeah, the data stacks, you've done your analysis, don't pussyfoot around it. Mm-hmm. While the opportunity is there, m- milk it dry. Yeah. Because like you said, you can have some then selling for months. Yeah, absolutely. Like if you, that's the thing for me, like right now, if I can get like a products every month, that's 30% ROI, the amount of work and stuff, I just rather get like a three month one that's 40% ROI by three months stock and I don't have to even think about it again, then it's just selling in the background. Because at the end of the day, when you're scaling up, that is how you are going to scale up to big numbers. Like when I'm doing like, I think this month, you might have to screen some 1.3K in a day. Once I'm doing that, that's like multiple products selling, but they're like, I've got a few months worth of stock of them. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So like, they'll just like all tick away at the same time. And then that's how you actually get your big numbers yeah. having like multiple things ticking away. Yeah, at once. And then we'll, we can get into like wholesale and stuff as well. Like that, I remember like, I don't want to say the lead. You know what the lead it is. Um, some people who start my store yeah. know the lead is, but I know they can't get the lead. But anyway, I had this lead, found this lead. I actually found it through storefront stalking. Um, had this lead, bought a few, so I made the. I found it on a website. It was an independent website. Messaged the guy, told him, "Hey, I want all this stock." He said, "Yeah, buy it." I then messaged him saying, "Do not upload this stock on the website again. Every time you get it in, send me an email." And he would, and I'd pay him the money, and I'd get the stock. And every time he would pay, he would pop up saying, "I've got like two hundred units of this." And it'd be like, I'd make like seven pound per one. So it'd be like, every time he emailed me, it'd be like one one to two grand profit. And I and they'd, they'd sell within a week. And it was, that was like 100% my best ever selling lead. I think, I don't think I'll ever beat that. And again, this is where um, you're you're developing and taking it a step further. You're, you're not just purchasing it off the website. You're then yeah. outreaching and securing that stock yeah. for future business. Exactly. Well, so that then I did the exact same with another store. I emailed them. Not gonna say the name of any of these stores because don't want the people to in case I ever do business with them ever again, but emailed another person, got them to take it all down from that their store. So I had two stores emailing me yeah. all their stock. And then a third one, I actually rang them up. It was a Scottish guy, and I was like, and he was like, Why do you want all why do you want all these? And I thought it was a terrible Scottish. I said, Why do you want all these? And um I just said, Oh, I'm yeah, I just need them. And then had him do it. So I had three stores giving me all this. I could not get enough. When people say, when you first started, I was like, I can't get enough stock of it. You think, what the hell? But I, on that, I could not physically get enough stock of it. It was a great lead. That was a really great lead. Um, but yeah, I had three stores basically emailing me, ringing me all the time for new stock. And that is literally how I made so much money in Q4. It was just mainly from that lead. Yeah. What was it? What did you finish Q4 on? Uh, 14 grand. In December. It was like 13 point something, 30.7, I think, or something yeah. December, yeah. Nice Christmas, that, innit? Really um, good. That was my best one for, I'm going to beat that. Hopefully this month, if not next month, but yeah. I'm on 15k this one for, we'll see. I trust you'll get there, mate. So what are some of the, the key lessons that you've learned? Now, mm-hmm. one thing that I think, well, I want to get your opinion on your um, sort of key lessons, but mm-hmm. I want you to give a bit of a explanation on the benefits of like using Amex. Okay, yeah, that's great. So probably like two months into my business, I got a business Amex. And as I said, like, you've got to know how to use it, haven't you, as well? Though You can't just buy. If you're buying leads, then I'm going to sell and don't get an Amex. You've got to, that's why when people get an Amex straight away, don't get an Amex straight away because that's just stupid. Two, three months in, once you know the, what, what you're doing, 
leverage Amex credit is because when I told him one of my credit cards, that's what I mean, the old school thinking how, yeah. oh my, oh my, you yeah. know, you're going to be able to pay that. Uh, yes. Having credit is good. I still have an Amex now. I still use it all the time. You already know you get all them benefits from having an Amex, yeah. but having that Amex gives you, it might be a thousand pound extra. It might be 500 pound extra. It might be two. It gives you more capital to play with. Doesn't it? Yeah. And, and that is what is and in them early stages of FBA. That can make the difference between, you know, say your trajectory is like this. It can make the difference from going like that or like that. Yeah, yeah, And that is what it comes down to. You've got to leverage all aspects of the business. Yep. Not even just an Amex, but, you know, if you want to get a loan or something, as long as it's a good APR, do it. I was just going to say then. <laughs> you, uh, I have lent money off Jack before. <laughs> I was going to say, the, it was, uh, so JP has had a loan off me. I have had a loan. But like, it, was, it, wasn't, a, it wasn't like this. Like, I paid them back within a month. Um, I had this lead that I had to buy yeah. um, and I was like messaging him saying <laughs> I said bro please. like I know it I see I know if I asked him for anything and they would give me it not like just because we're all good friends yeah, so yeah. like I, I don't want to ask him for money but like I was desperate so I was like please 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 can't and he, I remember you sent me the money and you were like don't even tell me when you, I said I'll send it back in a month you're like don't want anything for, for, for it don't want any interest just send me back because you ready. offered me an extra grand on top of yeah, what yeah and you said you don't want it did you? yeah I was like don't want it. I said, don't I'm worry. not, he's my, he's my best mate. I'm, yeah. I'm not making money off the back of my best mate, yeah. like from, from doing something. And that, I, I do really appreciate yeah. that. But that's why I'm, that's me paying for this party. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, um, as I said, like in terms of like leverage and stuff, obviously I'm very blessed to have a good, a good mate like Jack, um, but I can lend, I'm not going to say how much it was, but I can lend money off for, for a lead. You might not have that, but you might have a mum or dad that can lend you 300 pounds, 400 pounds. Um, with no interest or you might be able to leverage a loan or mm. do it because if you know what you're doing and you back yourself you've got to back yourself mm -hmm. as well and I do back myself um, it's taken a while to back myself but yeah, when yeah. you do back yourself why not you're fully confident in all aspects of life now though I think as well like yeah. in, in, uh, no, well, no, I, what I'm trying to get to is your mindset around everything changed yeah. like and now with the business side of stuff especially you you're like straight to the point I don't feel like like there's no dilly dally in, there's no panic. It's yes, right, going hard. No, I'm not having that. It's just rational. Yeah. There's no like you're not getting stressed over. Oh, is this right? Is that right? Yeah, blah, blah, blah. absolutely. Well, I live a very, very. I I, I have unnecessary stress sometimes that I only yeah. bring on myself, which as everyone does. Yeah, yeah. But I live a relatively stress free life, and this is the whole thing about Amazon. Why I say it's such a good business model because. If I was still doing teaching, I would not be, would not have managed to get, lose the weight I put on over lockdown. I wouldn't be in the mental state that I am now and stuff. So having that Amazon business, being your own boss, it allows you to level up. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what, that's what matters. You've got to level up. It's player versus player. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. Um, so important lessons. What have you learned along the way? So that, that the big lesson we said before is don't take any money out. Mm -hmm. But obviously we discussed that. Second big lesson that I would say is probably use your time more efficiently. You know, do not waste time because I've had times when I've went on my unit and I've done no work. Um, like when I came back from Portugal last week, I went in and just stayed on my phone yeah. for five he's, hours. He's <laughs> ringing me up and was like, is it normal to feel like this after a holiday? <laughs> so I need a hug. <laughs> yeah. So like I just stayed on my phone for five hours just to say I went to work, which not much work was done, but use your time officially. And what I mean by that is when you start, you've got, you've got to use your time because that, that is the most valuable thing, isn't it? Time. time is currency. It is. And time is money. And at the end of the day, you've got to use it officially. You've got to sacrifice things as well. It, like it links into time, this whole thing of sacrifice. You have to, you're not going to make it to the top. You're not going to make so much money if you do not sacrifice things out your life. I need to, um, we're going to shout out someone here because he did ask me for a shout out. <laughs> Who do you think it would be? I don't know. Mac and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. So uh, Aiden is a, one of my childhood best friends. Um, and Childhood. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> these Aiden and him have beef, basically. Nah, there's no beef. Uh, so, <laughs> over who's closer to me. But right. So Aiden um, was in a, bad situation, called me up and like was struggling with his work. And look, it's at the point where he said to me, Jack, I told you I was going to start Amazon 12 months ago. And now I fucking wish I had because I'm in a 
shitter of a situation. Don't know what to do. Anyway, he started Amazon and I've also got him a job. The job I've got him, I'm going to keep it very vague. Mm -hmm. Uh, Better paying job. um, And it's with someone that um, I know very well. Very, very, very fucking successful, right? Uh, multi, multi multi-millionaire. And he's going to be this guy's right-hand man, pretty much. I can't wait to take him on. (laughs) (laughs) So he's not a PA. He's not a PA, don't think that. But he's a right-hand man. And he's going to be around this guy and around this very high, high level executive um, who owns um, like four seven figure businesses and a eight figure business. And Aiden, and he won't mind me saying this, like, because I've literally, I'll pull up the DMs. He, he was like worrying about certain things, like, because mm-hmm. this job's going to be demanding. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was like, well, I hope I'm going to get some time for the, like, for the gym, like, blah, blah, blah. And like, and like, he's like, oh, but I'm also stressed about this. And like, I hope this weekend I've got this. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. This now is go time. Yeah. It's fucking show time. Make the sacrifice. 100%. You're not going to have to suffer forever. You've got to go through it though, right? You've got to, you've got to commit to something because at the end of the day, so we can, we can talk. So there's two things I want to say about this. So like when people don't start, they think they're missing out on that first month pay. So with Amazon for me, 300 pound first month, if I don't start till a month later, Am I missing out on food in Japan? No. I'm missing out on a month at the end of my journey. Mm-hmm. And yeah, how yeah. much am I going to be in at the end of my journey? Yeah. Say if I, say my end journey is 10 grand, starting a month later is costing me 10 grand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that is literally the way to think about it. Yeah. So you've, you've got you've to you've go all in. And it doesn't come without sacrifice. No, like if I look at myself, I have literally sacrificed so many things, holidays, my, I still drive a 2009 Fiesta. We have a, we have a laugh about it. Yeah. My nan and granddad are probably watching this, so thank you, nan. They <laughs> and granddad, they give me a, um, well, I paid for it, but they they give me yeah, it for yeah. a good deal. And I I haven't upgraded my car. You yeah. know, I've I've not got too far ahead of myself, and I've I've locked it in. And if you want something, you have to lock it in. You literally have to lock it in. Yeah. yeah. There's no. It's like how when people say, oh. Because you won't mind me saying it, one of my one of my best mates, Ollie, um, he or oh, I always speak to him, tell him to get Amazon, he won't get into it, he's like, I won't have time for that. You've you know, it comes to the point where how badly do you want something? Yeah, you've yeah. gotta want it. I'm trying to push him down this route. We'll we will get him there eventually, but yeah. you've gotta want it and you've you've gotta sacrifice things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You've gotta like, yeah. Look, plain and simple, yes, it's gonna be shit for a while. Yeah. Like you, when you first started, you said it was yeah. a struggle. Yeah. Yeah. And in you summary, could have took yeah. the teachers, you had an offer. You could have t- taken that yeah. offer and got 2.5K coming in the next month, right? Yeah. But instead he chose to struggle. Mm-hmm. And then now he's at a point where he's already done uh, 10K yeah. in profit by the 20th of the month. So yeah. 20 days into the month, already 10K profit. Well, that's 4X. I can tell you I'm a lot less stressed than I was as a teacher as well. I can- yeah. And, you'd, and you're, you're going to end up doing, so if you do 15K, what's that? Um... How many times? Five, six, ten. What are you asking? <laughs> how many times how many, to go in? No, no, no. How many times? Like six. Two point five K. Six. Six. Not good at maths. He's a teacher. <laughs> Should have let him do it from the start. Um, but yeah, six times. <laughs> so he would work half of the year for what one yeah. month output of the business does. I know, yeah. I mean we told him about that way and we do the day actually when it was like two months work is like a year's wage and it's quite scary to think about, but you know, it it hasn't come overnight. So yeah. yeah. It's, it is, it's, it's, I remember, and I've never told this story. I don't even know if you know this. You might know it, you might not. But I remember I was at home at mum and dad's and we need to try and put the scene here. <laughs> Wolf of Wall Street, right? Yeah. Do you know when Donnie goes over to him and he says like, how much did you make last month? She's so fidgety. <laughs> no, <laughs> not that one. <laughs> um, when he goes over to him yeah. and he says like, how much did you make last month? Yeah, and he goes to work for And you. what was the dollar figure? 72,000. 72,000. I had a month in pounds where my profit converted into exactly $72,000. And I was like, (laughs) what the fuck? I'm now like, I watched that on TV and now it's here. In my old job, I would have had to work three years, three years for one month's earnings, right? (laughs) Are you suggesting that you're... uh... You're my no, I'm, what I'm suggesting is you're, you're, yeah, you're Donnie for sure, bro. <laughs> but yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing how far 
And, both yeah, come. and once you've done it, like once you've you, you've sort of reached those numbers, and you that's why I froze a, another reason of the worst thing is going back to the nine to five because look, if we really apply ourselves, we can make a lot of money. Yeah, and we know that we can. We've done it. But if you're in that nine to five, well, it's up to your boss. Is he yeah. going to give you a bonus every month? No, he's not. He might yeah. give you one at the end of the year. Are you going to be happy with it? Maybe not. You're ma- you're, you're 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 pretty much capped out. Yeah. With us, sky's the limit. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, as I said, like seeing what other people earn as well. I know that hopefully my well, I know not because I hopefully that that money that I'm making every month is only going to go up mm-hmm. because obviously. I say this, I don't want to be doing Amazon for the whole life. I know there's more out there that I want to do, but it's just that thing. Once you see the money, you know you can earn more. Just keep going. It's a stepping stone. Yeah, absolutely. Just keep going. can even be at a point where you're Amazon, you're still running it, but like in the background, it's pretty, you can get it to a pretty much automated state. Yeah. You can have employees do it all for you. You take your wedge. Yeah, absolutely. I think in summary with the lessons is just sacrifice and work hard. That's literally it. It's not not no um, secrets. That's it. There isn't Sacrifice a secret, and work is hard now. People no. think there's like secret leads. It's like that's that's saying, isn't it? It's like um, hard work beats talent mm-hmm. or something, isn't it? You don't work hard, you're not gonna get anywhere. JP, a lot of people. You had. Um, I'm not gonna say. Um, well, it was a bit of a better starting situation than most people. Yeah. So you had, was it three grand and three grand the watch? And the watch. Yeah. He sold the watch um, to put into this. Uh, after after five five months, yeah. sold the watch. Not going to say how much for, but put that money into yeah. Amazon. It was, it was a it, good, good amount. It was under 10K. It was under 10K. It was more than 5K. Yeah. Um, and it was basically because you knew it worked. And again, you wanted to scale as aggressively as possible. Exactly. Cash. Needed cash, right? So. Don't we all? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yes, we do. I'm not getting off that yacht in San Tropez <laughs> yet. We'll be there soon, boys. Benidorm. Yeah. <laughs> At the minute. Um, and a dinghy in <laughs> uh, So what I want to do now is, from all the knowledge you've gained, yeah. to someone who is just starting out, and let's just give them a reasonable budget of £500. Pounds. Most pounds. people I get on the phone with, they need 500 quid. Now, yeah. limited company and your bank and all that, Let's just say that's already set up. Yeah. That costs you about 50 quid yeah. um, to get set up, by the way. One-time uh, fee. Yeah, one-time fee. That's the limited company fee. We actually provide a service where we'll help you do all of that for free. We walk you through it all, make it dead stress-free, very simple. Um, however, let's just say you've got 450 left now. Yeah. Where are you putting that money starting from scratch? If I really want to be aggressive with it, I probably wouldn't get... <laughs> Sell a toolkit immediately. Yep. I mean, the advice I was ideally, with. I would have it because it is really good. But it's not essential. No, it's not essential. Um, so first thing, always sell a ramp. As I said before, sell a ramp. Don't even spend any money. Just go in shops, scan things. Sell yeah. ramps, £13 a month. Yeah. What's that? Two pints, three pints, whatever yeah, yeah. it is. You can afford that. It's a takeaway, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Get sell a ramp. Then what I do is after you've gone through all, all different types of shops, you know, your B&Ms and stuff, I then start looking for products. You can either, you can do one or two things. You can look in the Discord, look for the lead channels. You can ask people where's best at the minute. Because normally the, they'll have like phases, won't they, where one store's really good at the yeah, minute. Like, yeah. you know, we've had them Sainsbury's yeah. um, sun creams that were really good. So like if you went in Sainsbury's, there was a whole bunch of things you could get in the... Um, sun cream aisles and the summer type of thing. So yeah. you have stores where so it's good to actually leverage the Discord and, yeah. you know, all these people who are doing FBA to actually ask for the, what is good right now? Yeah, because people will tell you, because if I live in, I live in Liverpool, <coughs> Jack lives in Manchester. It's very rare that I'd come to Manchester to do RA. If I ask Jack, you know, what's good? He'll probably tell me, because he knows I'm not going to be stepping on his toes. He's not going to be stepping on my toes. Why not? Mm-hmm. So leverage that Discord. They'll then give some, you'll have some ideas of leads, you'll have some ideas of stores. I personally think, for me, best store to go in is probably the one that I've had most success with is either Boots or Home Bargains. They are my two stores that I always used to do. It might have changed now because obviously I don't do this anymore, but the, I know Boots is still really good, isn't it? Because I always see it on your stories and stuff. Probably just going to Boots. Boots clearance. You can, it's a bit of a goal. You can either get strike strike um, strike gold or 
you don't get anything. But that's yeah. how the game works. It's yeah. all part of the fun. Yeah. So that's what I'd do. I'd go into some clearance stores and then try and actually buy products then. Yeah. And you're going to put like all of that yeah. into products, right? So for about four, four, four you'd have about four, three, five, then more than you have to sell yeah. ramp. Obviously set up your, your seller, your, your um, Amazon seller account and stuff. We're first. assuming they've already set all this yeah, up, yeah. aren't we? So you've got four, three, five left to play with. I would then go and buy some products. Then for your, in terms of your box, equi- um, your equipment, like your tape, your scissors, everyone has a pair of scissors in the, in the kitchen drawer, don't they? Yeah. Tape, if, what's tape? Like a pound. I'm yeah. not even going to talk about tape. Boxes, there is places that will give you boxes. You can even type in on Facebook Marketplace, you know, boxes. You'll be surprised. People just want to get rid of cardboard. Like in my unit, like they want to get rid of cardboard and pallets and stuff for free. Um, but you can go into stores. Like when I, I used to work in b and when I was in uni, um, we used to always have people come in and, asking for boxes and with that we just flat back them in the back so mm. and they're good enough to use it doesn't matter does it if using no. a crisp yeah. box or anything use as long anything. as it isn't strong enough to make sure it doesn't matter it gets everyone obviously piece. when you let when you scale up you can buy boxes in bulk but when you start and you want to save as much money as possible for so, the stuff that's going to generate yeah. you the roi being so then, the then with that 435 obviously as i said going to stores i then start trying to buy products once you've got a decent amount when i see decent i mean 50, probably 50 minimum, more like a hundred pound plus profit. I'd then look to get your first shipment sent in. Your first shipment will take a while to do. Even if you follow the guides, it will take a while. It's just something that you have to do. But now you can do a shipment in about 10 seconds, 20 yeah, seconds. Yeah. It's just, it's hard to, to get the- it's alien it's to new, you, isn't yeah. it? It's completely new. That's the thing about, it's always been like that with me. Like when, when I do anything new, I like to watch other people do it. And then I have an idea. Luckily at the time when I started Amazon, I had Sam- I could ask him things, but he wasn't with me by the computer to do my first shipment. So it will take a while. You know, you just have to do it. And once you've done it once, it'll be a breeze. Then so do your first shipments, get the product product selling. And then, yeah, just keep going from there. Really get more products. With the products, let's dig a bit deeper. Yeah. What criteria are you looking for when you start? Criteria. See, it completely depends how many units you're going to buy. If we're we're assuming somebody's going to buy, like Boots Clearance, one to two units of a product. You might get lucky and get five. I would probably be looking if you first start. You've got to you see, you've got to come down to time as well. If you've got limited time, then anything over thirty percent ROI is what we typically yeah. say, isn't it? With Nomva, I really think you should be getting at least fifty percent because mm-hmm. you're especially not you're starting out yeah. because you want that buffer to be yeah. a bit bigger. I think fifty percent Nomva, yeah. but we'll just say thirty to start with. But if you've got loads of time, hundred percent, you should be looking for the seventy, eighty, hundred percent ROIs. They are out there. If you want to go and get them, they are out there because mm-hmm. I've had them. Yeah, yeah. So they are out there in Boots Clearance. You'll find them. You won't find them as much in like home bargains and stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's what I always say to people. It's like when I start, I'd go to Boots, I go to like my TK Maxx, I try and find them big ROI stuff. And then to fill the box, your box fillers, I'd then go to my B&M, my home bargains, get like, remember I used to get like them, um, what were they? Them yellow, yellow Dr. Paul Paws, weren't they? Yeah, and they yeah. were like, the, you can get like L'Oreal things from Home Bargains. They'll mm. fill up your box. Yeah, and don't, then, they'll, don't be 100% ROI. Some, sometimes you might be, but they'll be like, you know, your 30, 50% yeah. ROI. Perfect. But obviously, Target Boots, TK Maxx first. No success, not the end of the world. Then go to stores where you can get quantity. Yeah, and with like those Dr. Paul Paws, they were pretty much replenishable, weren't they? Literally. Consistently yeah. going for ages. Literally, they would sell... I don't know if they're still going around now. I think they had issues. Not- there was the IP issues. Yeah. yeah. But when we were selling them, there was never any issues, yeah. was there? Sometimes that, you've got to be very unlucky for that to happen, but yeah. um, it happens. And what was one major sort of mistake that you would make at, at the start? Like, was it, would it be around, like, in, within your analysis? Because I've had people yeah. met, ring me and say, Jack, nothing sold. And then you look at it, it's got like either yeah. no BSR or it's yeah. like free k I mean, that is a typical thing. 3%. Even sometimes if things sell one, two times a month and you've got one unit, you will get the sale on yeah, it. Yeah. The biggest thing for me, I think, is when people start, it doesn't really get mentioned enough, is the average buy box. Because mm-hmm. people don't realise when you start that prices can be inflated. Yeah. So they'll think, oh my God, the buy box is, or not even the buy box, the price of the selling is this. Oh my God, I'm going to make 500% ROI. They'll send it in and then it'll be a loss because... Amazon, when Amazon or anyone goes out of stock, whoever's got stock in basically d- dictates, dictates the price. The price. Yeah, yeah. So you could be looking at something which, say for example, I always use when I'm describing what I do, a bottle of Lucas Aid's worth a pound. Yeah. yeah. Say that's selling for a pound on Amazon. If everyone else is out of stock, I can put that price up at 20 pound 
And then if I'm buying loads of units at 50p, hmm. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to make so much money, you know? Yeah. And then it, the reality is, so I say for me, if you go down on Seller Ramp, hopefully there can be like a little animation on the yeah. TikTok. When you go down on Seller Ramp, you can actually um, look at current 30, 90, 180 day. And I think all average, you can look at the averages mm -hmm. and then also you can look at the graph as well. So that's mm -hmm. what, what I'd say the biggest thing is. Because yeah. to me, sometimes I get stuff and I'd be like, why is that not selling? Is there a, a number of sellers that would put you off? If you're looking at something over a thousand sales a month, I don't even look at the sellers. Because I know for a fact, like if I, even after wait like two or three months, they'll go. They will go. Yep. But if you're looking at more 30 sales a month, then it comes down to common sense, doesn't it? If you yeah. see people with tons of stock and they've got 30 sales a month, you might be able to get one unit in and out. But if you're buying 10 units, why? Yeah, yeah. Your money can be spent better elsewhere. Exactly. Exactly. Just ask people as well in the Discord. This is the thing, like, you're not on your own, yeah. you know. I hate to think anybody will join the group or just start FBA and think they're on their own. They have to be on their own. Ask people. If you go on FBA Instagram, which is a thing, yeah. you can, most people, I always try and reply to everyone. Ask people questions. They, If you ask them a, a pretty straightforward question, I guarantee 95% of people will reply. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing, it's, yeah, you might not be comfortable asking a question, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, what's going to accelerate your progress quicker? Learn as much, be a sponge, speak to people that are already doing it and making money from it. And then you use them, utilize that knowledge, utilize their failures or let them say, oh no, don't buy this because I fucked up with this. Well, then you're not going to make the yeah. same mistake as them. Speak to people, build a network, build a, uh, uh, like you can get to a point where like, you build a small community of you, like Aaron and them, they've just launched a PL brand together. Yeah. And that's come out of being in the platform. Mm -hmm. Like the, the guys wouldn't have met yeah. if it wasn't for with that. With that whole thing though, you can probably get away with asking a few a few questions, but then you've got to add value as well. Mm -hmm. Comes down, like I have a really good friend who, I'm not going to name his name, you, probably, you know what I'm talking about, do Amazon with him. We send each other a bunch of leads constantly. I trust him with mm -hmm. any lead I have that he won't. Because the thing is, it's communication as well. Yeah, yeah. He's messing me so many times, like, up your price. Yeah, yeah. And it comes down to the thing of, okay, we're in it as a team, though, so it's like, up your price, we'll up the price. We both make money. Yeah, yeah. Because the things we're getting selling enough times, we want to both make money. Yeah. And if we can get double the leads from sharing leads with each other, it was like that thing, we had this lead, I'm going to say, because I'm still selling it now, but he sent me the lead, we bought the lead, and then I noticed that it went uncapped. And then I told him it's gone uncapped. Yeah, yeah. So he sent me the lead. We both got the lead. I think it was like five units max each originally. It then went uncapped. I told him it went uncapped. And me and him took all the stock and went, made Amazon got the stock. But it's like, if he didn't send me that lead, I wouldn't have, it was like, it's got to be a value yeah, yeah. exchange. You get and, what I'm saying? And, and I think as well, one thing um, the when you're, when you wanted to speak to, let's say, like the, the bigger sellers like yourself, <laughs> it's, you want to make sure that your question is actually yeah. reasonable. Like yeah. if it's something that could be sorted by a quick Google, don't waste his or, time. what are you selling? I am not going to tell anybody what I am selling. Yeah. Like, it's just like, I might tell you the category, but I'm not going to tell you, oh, by the way, I'm selling this. I got it from here. It's just not, you, you're never going to get anyone yeah. who's going to give you anything like that for free ever. No, no. of course. Ever. Everything is value. Exactly. So now I guess we've done a bit of a, a, a deep dive there. I guess we can sort of touch on, um, and what I'd like to do as well, in the comments, if you've made it this far, if you've watched the FBA segment, I think it would be good for us to do like, answer some comments at some point in a future video. Yeah, definitely. If people have made it this far, I want you to comment, pook, P-O-O-K, okay? <laughs> comment, okay. and we'll take note of who's watching. And make sure you get your questions in as well. Yeah. Now, we've done a lot of stuff. We've talked about a lot of you. Mm. The F more FBA stuff, I guess, can come from people's questions. Yeah. Um, and the, like, look, this isn't going to be the only podcast we do around um, FBA and stuff. Yeah. All inclusive the next one. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be an all inclusive <laughs> vlog coming soon. But uh, look, I think mindset is obviously yeah. a big one and, and what, what it, what it takes to get here. We've touched on a, a bit of it already. For me, the main thing that I always preach to people and I even post it on my personal Instagram this morning, consistency. Yeah. Where our YouTube channel, look, I wasn't consistent for a period of time and have paid the price yeah. for it. So 
got back, consistent. Ben, the guy behind the camera, smashed out the park, made sure we've got all the uploads on. And then our growth on YouTube has gone from flatline yeah. to steady, 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 up, 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 go. Compounds and you rock it. Consistency is literally key to any business. Um, and I think it's something that most people forget about. It's just ticking those boxes every day and you're not going to see the result immediately. Yeah. Like in the gym, you go and lift the weights every day. You're not coming out of the gym after one session and you've got 21 inch biceps there. What happens over time, over months, over years, that progress stacks and then yeah. you visually see the changes. Consistency for you is a bit of a big part. 100%. So like you've got to be consistent with it. I mean, that is, I'll touch upon one of the disadvantages of being self-employed is when you go away yeah. on holiday. Like I do that charity week. When I come back from, when I was away at that week, I was making good money. And then about two weeks later, I had a bit of a down week. So, but that just shows if you're not putting in the work, you, it's going to catch up to you eventually. So you've got to be consistent with it. And it's that thing I always love. I, I don't know what the exact figures are around it, but it's like you put a thousand pounds into Amazon and you get 30% ROI every six weeks. After two years, you'll have like, we, we can work it out the exact amount, but it's it's crazy because you're compounding it and you're being consistent every six weeks. I've got something, I've got a calculator yeah. here for it. Uh, I'm not that good at maths, mate. <laughs> it's on the aftermarket arbitrage website if you're interested. Yeah. Let me find it. So, yeah, it's just really interesting, to be fair, to say if you're consistent with something, then after so long, you can have this amount of money. And it, at the end of the day, if you have breaks or you take money out, it's not going to work, is it? Well, in this one, this is monthly. So, mm. starting amount 500 quid. 500 quid. ROI over the period, 30%. average. Average of 30% is low. But I think it's 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 achievable. It's very easy to achieve. Okay. So if you do 30% return on investment, you take that £500 and in six months, it's going to be £2,413. Yeah. Now, 30% is... Relatively low. We don't want... Pe especially when you're not that registered, you don't want to be anywhere yeah. near that really, do you? No. You want to be coming out at what? 50 to 80? Is yeah, 100%. But... Um, it, that number might seem a bit lower, but it's it's the more you go on and the more months that when you get yeah. to the end of two years, you have a scary amount of money. Believe me, I know because I have done that exact thing with £3,000 starting and the amount of money I have now is a lot higher than that. So I've, been, I've done that exact thing. And if you're consistent with it week on week and you're getting products that do sell, which as everyone knows, you've got to learn how to do it, but once you do learn, you will yeah. make good money. Yep, yep. And... It is, it's, it's, like JP said, it's the sacrifices. It's it's doing the work when everyone else won't. And it's being able to go against sort of what the general consensus is with regards to having a nine to five. The nine to five, I said in the last podcast, we don't bash it. It's an amazing tool, but in my eyes, it should only be a tool that you should leverage mm -hmm. to then do your own thing. That nine to five, hopefully for you, is very stable income. Take that income, put a bit of it away every month, build up a nice pot of capital and then put it into your thing. And it yeah. doesn't have to be FBA. It can be anything else. But if you put it into FBA, look, you're going to be able to quite accurately predict where you're going to be in the future um, just based on how structured of a business model that it is. You've got a nice level of security there. But please don't accept the nine to five as the be all and end all. You've gone from... Like, you did a, uh, what was your profit? 103,000, something like that. For the year. You got the, you'll have the, the yeah. Yeah, I think it was 103,000 JP did. For 2023. Um, for 2023, right? In that teaching job, how much would you have made? Well, this is the thing. It, 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 starting teachers probably get about 27 grand, but that's obviously, you've got to pay tax and stuff on that, haven't you? Yeah. So let's just say 2.4, 2.3 grand a month, maybe. Yeah. And look, <laughs> JP's business made over 100 grand. Four times that. Right? Yeah. Four times the yearly Yeah, age, four yeah. times. But we're not saying, obviously, it's going to be nonsensical to pull out 100K. You know, you, no, you're yeah. not going to, look, your business collapses at that point. But what we're saying is, you could easily now double 
your monthly wage. Yeah. So you could take 5K out a month, right? If you yeah. wanted to. 100%. If you wanted to. However, that's up to him with his preferences and how he wants to grow the business. But the point I'm trying to get to here is in that teaching job, how many years would it have taken to you to yeah. get to a point where you could earn five grand a month? Yeah. Like, what's the progression like? Do you actually you... want to know? Like, yeah. yeah. So with teaching, this is the thing that I could not get out of my head when I was a teacher was like, you basically start on like, let's say 27 grand, 26 grand. And then you basically get a pay increase, not based on the work you do. It's based on like how long you've been a teacher. So every year or two, I don't know what it is exactly because it's been a while now, but you get like a 1.5 grand a year increase. That then stops after six years, I think it is. And then you can then get, you can apply to get an extra three years. So then it'll go for an extra, so nine years in total, pretty much. They might have changed it now, but this is what I remember it being. So then eventually you'll be on like 38 grand max without doing, but then if you want to get more, you have to do extra responsibilities. So head of year, head of the department, yeah. so on, so on. But who wants to do, who actually wants to do that? Like, I don't know. And if you're really passionate about the job and stuff, honestly, yeah. my ha I I applaud you because yeah. it is a really hard job. But for me, having that ceiling and having like that sort of thing of you're only going to get this increase year on year, that for me was an issue because I knew, as I said, I'd been to Paris, I'd seen the life. I knew I had to get that life. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the answer. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that's, look, that you've essentially, except I, I'd quite probably quite comfortably say like, look, let's just say you pulled out, um, let's just say from that 100K, because you felt like it, you decided to pay yourself 50K. Yeah. Right? That, how many years have you just accelerated? Yeah, literally. Your, your life. It's incredible. It's incredible and it's realistic and it's in touch. Um, You've yeah. literally just got to start. I bet you're like, obviously at the start, I said I was working really hard, but now, I mean, I should really work harder now to be to be, to be completely honest with you. But um, I definitely, I'm definitely nowhere near the stress and I don't feel, maybe I'm working harder now, but I definitely don't feel like I am because I enjoy it. But the, the things as well, when you do this sort of thing, you, the, the, the value that you then attach to yeah. your time it, it's incredible. You know, you get involved, you're out of putting the time. Yeah. Whereas if you're a teacher, you've got to stay behind and mark them books. You know, you're not going to pay any extra to mark them books. Yes. It makes it a chore, doesn't it? Yeah. And it's also like you, your, your time spent like is so much more productive yeah. in the sense of you're being compensated way more for the time that you're putting into your own business mm -hmm. versus um, like your, your standard capped role in whatever industry but if you're at a point where you're not happy look no one is going to save you it's up to you look no one can control what situation they're born into and some people have it really hard some people have it really good growing up but it gets to a point when you're of a certain age certain like you've had certain life experience where you can't let the stuff from the past hold you back anymore. It's not an excuse anymore. You've had enough time to make a difference because plenty of other people have done it. Like Marcus, who, he, he, if you see how he grew up in Latvia, the videos on that is crazy, yeah. like real poverty. And now the guy's a multimillionaire. But he's not sat in a job earning 30K a year in the UK and blamed it on the fact that he had uh, he, he grew up in a in a bad situation that is but then become fuel to then be the person that breaks the mold in his family and yeah. use that do it you need to accept responsibility because at some point in your life you've made actions which have led to the position you're in right now whether you like to hear it or not and that's when I'm like even with the comment section where people are saying Oh, but you should be, yeah. you, you should be, you shouldn't be doing that. Like it's disgusting. You're taking money. Um, like people who are, um, are struggling yeah. to pay their bills. Like, like for example, like with the black blankets where people are struggling to pay the bills and stuff, but it's like, I understand the argument, yeah. but then I'm not responsible for their financial irresponsible behaviour. It's in the shop for that. everyone, isn't it? At yes. the end of the day. Yeah. I know it's, it might start by it, it, it seems hard it's hard to it's well, really, like it's hard for, I think this it obviously can be read in the wrong way but when you're like a business owner you have to hold yourself 100% accountable so I know a decision I make today 
might make me a million pounds tomorrow. Or if I don't make that, or if I make the wrong decision, it's going to cost me. You need to accept that the decisions you're making day in, day out are having an impact on your future, whether you like it or not, whether it's you decide to skip the gym or whether it's decide you decide to not go to that that um, lecture at university. Everything has an impact and it's going yeah. to lead to a result that whether you like it or not, you are responsible for. I think like, you know, I think everyone's just like that in life in general, though, with the, all the comments and stuff, mm. because you're going to laugh at this, but um, Lou, I do love my mates at home, by the way, I do. Um, I have a lot of time for them, but they are like very, uh, they, if I wear white pants or I wear, you know, pants to go on holiday, they, they are like going, you're not bringing them pants on, you know, all that, yeah. but it's just like that old, that thinking of like, if you want to be a bit different, like people, not that you don't like it because my mates all love what I'm doing. They, they sometimes ask me about it and stuff where it's that thing of, if you're doing something that's not the ordinary, people will question it. And it can be applied mm. to the white pants or whatever, yeah, you know, yeah. whatever way you want to look at it or sometimes the shoes I'm wearing. But, and it also comes to the point where you've got to stop caring what people think. Mm. My mates aren't saying that to be horrible. They're having a laugh at me, by the way. Yeah. But it comes to the point where I'm like, I literally don't give a shit what you're saying to me. Like, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Like, Fine. Exactly. And that's what we've always like comments, bulletproof, mate. Yeah. Try harder. Um they never seen a hater doing better than me. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> like the, look, the reason that people can comment in the first place about the white yeah. pants, because it's different to the norm and what yeah. they're used to. Yeah. So if people are sat on the couch scrolling TikTok and they see us making money and they don't like it, yeah. the only reason that they comment is because whether they want to admit it or not, for some reason they're triggered. Yeah. For some reason, it hits home. It might, like, we get it a lot. Well, you just, oh, you sell courses. Well, we don't, like, we're not just a course selling thing. We're definitely not. Sell education. Yeah, but what, even, you might have just paid for a course at university. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just because it's labelled differently and it's not normal. However, the course that, well, not course, but the education you've learned from aftermarket has made you more than the yeah. university degree. And it costs a lot less. And it costs, yeah, exactly. It's I been mean, like, it's, yeah. it's the, it is just because people want to attach a negative connotation to what other people are doing when they see that they're doing something that they're not, because it's, that is their comfort blanket. Mm, yeah. It's like, well, the only reason he's got that money is because he sells courses, because he yeah. sells education, because blah, 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 blah. Shut up. Yeah. Like that is you confirming in your mind that in reality, you know, I'm earning money. You're not earning what you want to be earning. So you try yeah. and slap a label on it to devalue it. And it says more about you than what we do. Yeah. I agree. hundred percent agree. It's should we, should we get off this rant? Yes. <laughs> the... Money, Mitch. Yeah, it's it's your... all your fault. <laughs> Coming to you. <laughs> that money, Mitch, man. <laughs> the, um, he's going to be buzzing with his shout outs. Isn't he? Um, I think. It's There's, Ben. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're going to sort of start to round it up, but this may be the most important aspect. Yeah. Other than FBA, of the pod, being network, right? You get a network in aftermarket, can lead to loads of opportunities. Yeah. But there's loads of stuff in life where a network is incredibly important. I'm going doing something tomorrow that is only happening because of network. JP doesn't actually know the full story and I'm not going to release it here. I've recorded an intro to hopefully what's going to be an incredible vlog that is all happening because of network and it is the most fucked up situation. It's whatever you imagine that I'm going to be going doing and who I'm going to be with probably times it by 10 and then times it by another 10, right? <laughs> it is wild and I'm going doing this free of charge, completely free. <laughs> and it's all down to network. Yeah. And having a network of people around you, it it adds value in Makes so many different aspects of your life. And uh, what do you think? Like 100%, like as you said there, you're doing, I'm not invited by the way, but you're doing that <laughs> incredible thing tomorrow. Wait, you're in Benny Dorm, mate. I know, I know. I'm going to have more fun. But <laughs> yeah, as you said, like network is so important. Like when I said before about the guy that we send leads to each other all the time, we have this trust. I have you, I have Sam, everyone involved aftermarket. It, it's just huge at the end of the day. That's saying, isn't it? 
you are the, the sum of the five people you hang around with yeah. the most. And that is literally what it comes down to. Um, if you, I don't think any of my mates or anyone I hang around with uh, don't add value to my life. They add, Whether it's business or personal or, you know, they just make me mentally better. Yep. Everyone adds, that's the thing. When It doesn't have to be it money. It doesn't have to be money. Yeah. It, it can be, you know, um, tomorrow I'm going to have my, someone really good mates from home. We're going to have a laugh and that will benefit me. It's value. Yeah, hugely. We'll probably have some conversations. Who knows what could happen in a conversation, but the, the, the network is 100% the most important thing. Because as I said, if I didn't join aftermarket, wouldn't have started Amazon. It just opens up a whole rabbit hole, doesn't it? The whole realm. Whole realm of stuff. I mean, just like, even just stuff like meeting you and um, you tell me about the other lads and all stuff, it introduces to the whole value of money. And it's just huge. Like I remember, um, second time we met, train station, Preston. Yeah. <laughs> the end of the story. Um, so one of our good mates, LP. We haven't seen LP in a while, but we will we will see him soon. He um, um he used to work at Aftermarket as well. Yeah. Really good guy. Yeah. Um, shout out Lawrence. He's a good mate. I, I still FaceTime now time to time and he'll always answer and he'll always talk to me. Yeah. We, it's like that. We're one of them friends when you talk to him and you, you don't get off the phone to him because yeah, you just talk. Yeah. You catch up on so much stuff. Yeah. But Anyway, Lawrence invited us down, didn't he, to his 21st. This is, how many years ago? This is three years ago, isn't it? It's crazy. It's scary how fast it's gone. I didn't realise I'd be you for that long. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, so three years ago, Elfie invited us down to his birthday. We went and I remember I was I had to get the train from Liverpool, Preston, Preston. Is it Blackburn? There's Blackburn. It's like Clivero. Clivero, Clivero. Clivero. Um, so two trains. I got off a press and you were like, I'll come pick you up. <laughs> and then I remember standing there and um, next went, rah, 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 <laughs> and just came over <laughs> in this blue McLaren. And I remember like, I was like, I was gassed. I was like, <laughs> oh my God. And then um, I, I went in the car and I was very calm and composed. <laughs> um, we've got the video. You got the video? No, I'm not, I'm not giving you the video. Why? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, we'll, all right, I'll give you the video. Yeah, I'm going to put it in. You're going to watch it for yourself. But <laughs> but that was like my first time ever in a in a supercar. See, well, obviously I've been in a few more since then, but that was my first ever time. I've never drove one actually, yes, but that is coming soon. But um, Not mine because he can't drive. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the first ever one I'd ever been in. And that was like, you know, that was just like being in, having a good network, getting places that I had never dreamt I'd have been when I was younger. Like I used to think when I was younger, like I'd be... I used to, but that whole idea I mentioned at the very start when it's like, I wanted to be a dentist. This is how young I used to think about money. I was like, dentist turns £700 a week. That's £100 a day. Mm-hmm. Imagine how much I can do with £100 a day. That's happy days. Yeah, yeah. Obviously that's when you're a kid and you, you don't realise yeah. that bills and stuff exist. But so when I was younger, I never ever dreamt I'd have been in the positions that I've been. And that is all down to your network, like mm. Paris, cars. We go out to places now to eat and drink and... Me, I'd have never imagined like I'd ever have been in and there's much money to do now or, you know, I go the places I go. Like, I think when you're younger and you are surrounded by, you know, not knocking the working class, but working class, you are sort of put into a mindset of, you know, this is your life. You, you know, you work, you yeah. go to uni, get a mortgage, get a car on finance, yeah. pay off your mortgage. When you're 60, you own your house. You own your house. Like, wow. But like, yeah. that is, like for me, to do the things I'm doing now, to live the life I'm living. And I'm going to definitely start living much better in summer. Um, and then as you go into Christmas stuff, but it's, it's just, and honestly, it's, it's amazing. To close this off, the most important thing that he's just said is he's living his life. Yeah, 100%. I was thinking about this before when I was driving. With the stuff that's coming up and stuff like, I'm, I am living. Like even what's coming up next weekend. Yeah. These mad things that are all happening now down to network. Yeah. I'm living my life. We are living our lives. We are not just existing. Yeah. Don't let yourself go through life and get to a point where you're like, not really done anything that I want to do. The the thing is as well, is one bit of advice I'd actually give to people. And I spoke to my friend Steve about this multiple times, probably spoke to you about it multiple times. It's like, don't get your mates when you reach the top or when you're you're half. Get your mates at the start and... Mm -hmm. Bring them with you. Mm-hmm. They might not follow you all the way, but you you get them people you can trust. It's like that. I seen that video and it's like um, a six pm friend. Have you seen it? Like a six pm friend and a three am friend or something. No, I've not seen it. 
Something like that. So basically, if you, um, you've got friends that if you ask them for a favour and it's after 6pm, they won't do it. Yeah, yeah. But if you have friends that are 3am, if you call them, they'll come. They're your good friends. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, once you find them friends that you can 100% trust, you have common interests, you have common goals. That's it. Yeah. You grab them, you take them with you all the way. That's, That's the sick. most important thing. Because I, I wouldn't be where I am without my friends. I really wouldn't. Guess that's a good way to end the pod. Right. Thanks for having me on. JP's <laughs> JP's episode Thanks, man. has uh been long awaited. I think it's been absolutely fucking great. I hope if you've got to the end here, um let us know what you thought. We will be doing this again. No hate, please. <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be no hate, bro. Um if you got to the end. Thank you very much for watching. Please hit the subscribe button. We do have two more podcasts lined up. So, and these will be, they're not sort of um, going to be like what mine and JP's has been, where it's more like talking about stuff we've done together. These are going to be more FBA centric. If that's your jam. Make sure you subscribe, tell us your feedback, and I will catch you in the next one. Thank you, JP. Thanks, man.